All right, Nick Robinson. Here we are. Look at this beautiful next-gen gaming experience. This is so weird. What's weird? Uh, double guns. The idea that this was not that long ago. The idea that this was a generation away. Yeah, it wasn't. It really wasn't that long ago. Uh, this is Perfect Dark Zero. We should explain since this is the the first part of the video. Shoot the shoot the tripwire. Don't know. Nope, that's not it. You're a terrible secret agent. We should explain what this is. Uh, we're doing a, a video or a series of videos, depending on where you're watching it. Uh, looking at Rare Replay. Mm -hmm. Rare Replay is a big collection that just came out. 30 games from Rare's history. Um, and we decided, uh, you know, it's a, it's a cool collection. I think it's worth picking up just uh -huh. for the history's sake. But that's a lot of games, and how do you figure out what to play? Phil, if you don't shoot that thing, I'm going to scream. I'm going to scream out loud with my mouth. Real close. Doesn't work. Oh, you got a crouch. There you go. Uh, so we, we decided we would rank uh, all of the games on the Rare, Rare Replay collection. I, I don't want to be associated with the list you're making. Do in not order. Don't say we. From worst to best. Um, I did make the list, but I also got some feedback from you and from other Polygon staffers. And, um, and there's, you know, we can talk about it. There's there's parts where I'm sure you will disagree. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll, we'll talk about that as we get to it. Uh, but I think... Probably you mostly agree on this one, right? So this is number 30 that we're starting off with. Uh, in my opinion, the worst game on this collection, Perfect Dark Zero. Launch game for the Xbox 360. Uh-huh. And, uh... Well, no wonder you don't like you're being outsmarted by these boxes. I don't... How do I... Phil. I don't know how to do it. They, they have a big old fragile icon on them. Okay, Look at that. Look at that destructible environment. This. Punch them. Get out of here. Look at the physics on those. Those look great. Never mind, this game's awesome. I tried to tell you. Only way in is through that sensor field. Press dive left bumper to dodge. Oh, oh yeah. hell yeah. This game rules. What is what are you talking about? Uh, oh, oh, I don't think I dodged very well. Dodge again. Dodge past the Well, that worked. <laughs> you made it look easy, she says, as I almost you died. Did. You only took nine or ten bullets to your face. Well, there's a cover mechanic. I completely forgot about there that. There is a cover mechanic. Um, so press A. Oh my god. Can we do multiplayer, Phil? Can we fight each other? So, you know, it's worth talking about. This game got very mixed mixed reactions, but mm -hmm. look at her. Oh my. Can we see that again? We got two. Oh my god, it animates completely separately. Oh, oh no! Jeez Louise. Joanna? Is that her name? Joanna? That's Dark. Joanna Dark. Oh no. Uh, this game got mixed reactions, but one of the ways in which. Uh, one of the, the reasons it got praised was primarily for the multiplayer. I remember it also, like, graphically for its time, it was like. Kind of kind of nice. Yeah, I mean, as a launch 360 game, it was the first. You know, 360 coming out before uh, before the PS3 and everything. Yeah. Um, nobody had seen a console a, a console with HD graphics, right? Right. Yeah. This whole game to you seems to be about destroying like early LCD, like four by three LCD monitors. That doesn't look super safe, Joanna. <laughs> the, so one of the things about the cover mechanic that's awful too in this game is. Uh, you can't move when you're in cover. At oh, all. you're just stuck to you're it. You're stuck to it. That's weird. Um, I mean, so, I guess you Gears know, of War hasn't come out yet, right? Yeah, lots of cover stuff uh, got improved upon uh, throughout this generation, but it was not uh, not there yet. Okay, so hack it by pressing the D-pad. Is your hack orb it's a timing thing? You gotta hit A to stop it when it lines up. I think you stop each part separately. I did it! Well, look how HD those numbers are. I'm a real good hacker. Uh, we're, so we're, obviously this is very early in the game, we're actually just in the tutorial level, obviously. But what I really want to stress about this game is that when you get out into the levels in this game, it's just like big open levels with no real sense of what to do, no, like the level design is bad. Yeah. Um, and the shooting doesn't feel good. The cover system doesn't feel good. Like there's just nothing good. <laughs> In my opinion, there's nothing really redeeming about this. Uh, I mean, the at the time that it came out, like, yeah, there wasn't a lot of uh, online multiplayer stuff to play. So I think that maybe like 
there were people who got way into playing PvZ yeah. online. I remember that. Yeah, so that's cool. I don't know that in this collection that, I mean, the multiplayer servers you can play, I believe, still. I just don't know that, that people are going to be playing based off this collection. I hope they are, because I love how weird the idea of playing Perfect Dark Zero in 2015 is. Um, should we have a Perfect Dark Zero tournament? We should, Should we yeah. hold it with the viewers? Um, I, uh, I gotta... I I'm just, sure there are people in the comments who are angry that this is our number 30, and we can, like, hash that out. I, you know what, I think, like, just in general, like, in the history of video games, especially modern video games, you just crashed her own little camera thing, and then Joanna. Um, I feel like launch games always have the hardest time holding up. Do you sure. know what I mean? Um, and this is not really an exception. Yep, so go I think you're right. Go hack the uh, CPU. I think we've seen enough of Perfect Dark Zero. Let's move on to the next game on right. our list. Onward. Nick, how do you feel about Saber Wolf? Oh, you mean my favorite video game that there is? Uh, this is this is a uh, one of these early rare games. They put out a lot of games. Uh, for UK audiences, let's yeah. say, UK consoles. Um, this looks kind of tight. I don't know. The, the thing about a lot of their early games, uh, and, and I think this is why a lot of people loved them, um, this is back, by the way, when Rare, <laughs> Adventure completed 0%, back when Rare was called uh, two player. called Ultimate Play the Game. Oh, UPTG. Uh, you want me to do two-player? Sure. Let's, uh, I'm going to have to die again quick. I don't do think it. that's not going to be a problem for you based on that first play. Yeah. Game. Uh, the thing about a lot of the early games, incredibly ambitious, some, some amazing ideas, almost ahead of their time, because, like, they're trying to do these really complex, ambitious games with, like, two buttons. Yeah. Um, so in the case of this game, actually, there is only one, one action that you can do. Do you think it's gonna be actual multiplayer, or, like, turn, like, taking turns? Let's find out. Only one way to find out. I feel out. like this is the era of, like... You might, you might be right yeah. about taking turns. God, the way that the color, like, blocks uh, are chunked out when they overlap is such a sign of the times. So the only thing that we can do is is pressing one button allows you to sword fight. Yep. There's, it says press A to sword fight or press B to sword fight. Yeah. Oh, there's All you. Right, my turn. Um, and our, our goal here is... Oh, God, I need your controller. Hand it over. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh boy. You died. All right, well, I'm going to be you now. Okay. Uh, our, the goal in this is just to collect treasure. Um, you're specifically looking for, like, four pieces of a tablet that you're trying to put together, and once you put that together, you can escape... Oh, you just you turned like on the... Retro mode. The retro mode. That's how it used to look. Uh, which is something that you can do in this collection that's that's cool, although not very functional. <laughs> no. I like... This looks better. I'm sorry. It looks a lot better. <laughs> we've, we've come a long way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is something where I, I don't necessarily think this is a bad game, and, like... If I got this as a kid, you know, like, sure, I probably yeah. would have been like, oh, this is rad. It's hard to go back to this. Maybe. The, um, but the variety of animals I'm fighting is just undeniable. I'm going to stab this rhino. There's a variety of animals you're fighting, but all you can do is sword fight them. And what is that? What is that sleeping thing there? I, Wake it up. I, oh, my God. It's just all blending together into, I like, a gross it's some puddle of color. glitch monster. Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> I woke it up and... Um, you will see some plants sprouting as well out of the ground, and those different plants give you different power-ups. Um, it's a good thing. I want to touch it. Well, some of them are, and some of them are bad. Some will make you, like, invulnerable, some will give you a speed boost, and then some will, like, paralyze you or That's poison you. Uh, so that it's it's kind of a weird, almost randomized system there. I don't really... Some of the hitboxes in this game are questionable, but... They're very questionable. I think you're right. Some um, of the times, like, oh, let me get this gem... And that's another thing that I noticed with a lot of these older Rare games. Um, very animation-heavy in a way that's, you know, impressive for the time, but uh, at the expense of gameplay in some cases. Yeah, but, like, look, it's a very lush jungle. to give them, Absolutely. Like, it's nice-looking. It's very nice-looking. Um, very ahead of the time, I think, in, in many ways. Are they just infinite animals? They just constantly yeah, keep respawning Yeah, they constantly keep respawning. No, that's exactly true. Oh, that and, in fact, if you stay on the screen for too long, uh, a brush fire comes through. And oh, I kind of want to... All right, let's see if I can make that happen. Let's see if you can survive long enough for that. Well, there's scary spiders! Nice. Is holding A really the... Oh! I turned around. 3%. Well, I'm, look at that. We beat 3% of the game in this tiny video. Good on us. Excellent. Uh, let's keep going. Ooh. 
All right, Nick, now we're back. Uh, so you might notice some similarities to the game we just looked at. Yeah, but... Uh, Saber Wolf, which is you're playing as the same character. Actually. Oh, this is the same series. Um, I like the uh, isometric angle. They've Ooh, it's pretty weird. Uh, this game is called Night Lore, um, and it is. Uh... Oh, I'm transforming into a werewolf. Are you really? Oh my gosh! How does and that? I just jumped onto spikes. Even uh, so there's a day and night cycle, and you turn into a werewolf every night at the end of that cycle. Weird. Um, and also, this is a weird game. This is like, the isometric perspective is really crazy. Uh, I like it. It's got a strong, like, style to it. I don't know. Oh, there's a bottle of poison. But you're gonna turn back into a regular man. Well, I guess I'm really high. Whoa! Oh, 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 it, oh. In midair! And now you're a regular man. There's a, the fact that there's a... This game has... Technically, it has 3D jumping mechanics, which is pretty nuts. It's weird, right? Drink the poison. Oh, so I picked it up. First you have to stand on it for three seconds oh and surf it around the room. Yeah, you can actually set it down at any point and, and stand surf. on it and use it to jump off of. Oh, poison platforming. Um, it's a, This is weird. Uh, and you can find, like, a... I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the, the, the goal of this game is. Apparently that killed me. Uh, but you can, like, find poisons and potions and stuff and, and keys as well. And then you can find a cauldron... And okay. you can start mixing stuff together into the cauldron. Ooh, this is very occult. I'm surprised they got away with this. You gotta try to this... make a platform. Oh, this knight's gonna slay you. I hope he doesn't. Nice. No, I'm a friendly werewolf. You're a dead werewolf. No. Oh, you. He just walked right into Yeah, the you, hell. you trapped him. No. You're doing whatever the opposite of a speedrun is. You are poor at this game. We so. got 5%. Overall so rating? Good. Poor. And this is another one like Saberwolf, where I feel like, uh, again, playing this at the time it came out, it was probably a revelation. For sure. Um, it's it's got like not just the the. May I? Weird. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Not just the weird isometric angles on everything. Um, I believe it's A is jump here. Okay. And then X is going to be picking up items. Oh, there's um, no way around. I thought I could walk around these spikes. But... No, you can't. You've got to jump over them. I don't know if I have what it takes. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty. <sighs> And you can't hit the the bubbles either. All right, that's too, those are death bubbles. Uh, that's too much for me. I like how the game has a lot of slowdown in that room because it's really pushing it to its limit. Yeah, you can't walk around these either. I don't think. Oh, golly. Oh golly. Just a line to show me where the the walls closest to us are would help. <laughs> it would it would really help, right? Now, careful. This thing can fall on you and crush you. By are these? The way. Are these levels, like, procedurally generated in some way? I, I believe this is all, like, a set map. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, so, okay, this is looking familiar again. Yeah, so you can actually, like, learn... You know, that's... I, I think, like, if you're playing this back in the day, that was part of the fun, right? It was, what it was really learning. Uh, I think the items can be moved around. So, like, you can see where we once had poison... Little poison thing. Yeah. Now we've got, like, a chalice. Why is that sparkle chasing me and I'm surfing on it? I think that thing just, like, pushes you around. It, cool. it doesn't kill you, it's just, like, a jerk. That's a weird mechanic. Yeah. It's an it's not, like, drop it. He's got a heck of a jump, though. So apparently something happened, and the knight from uh, or the, oh, the no, character I... from Saber Wolf now is, is cursed. He's the Saber Werewolf. Yeah, one might say. Right, I'm gonna stealth it. Oh, nice! You wanna? Oh, look, there's a boots up there. If you can get up that there, boot. can I grab this? Oh, you can push the table back. Oh gosh, hold on. I think you might have pushed it too far against the no, wall. No, I got this. I got this. Oh, you got it. My boot collecting is second. I'm, I'm going to learn from your mistake, and I'm going to not trap him by the door. Oh, and don't hit those those little statues; will kill you. Yeah, we've been, oh, it, it, it. at least he's trapped, though. I'm glad he's frozen over there, and we're safe out here. Oh, okay, oh get it! Get it! X, drop. X X X X. Okay, boot collected. I don't know if you could drop it on his head. Maybe that actually works. I'm going to make a. I'm going to make a boot potion. All right, I'm going to reset this room, and then. <laughs> Go for it. Eh. You Man, that one, that's right into the, that mine. That one didn't fall last time, though, interestingly. They're, like, kind of random. Ooh, I'm kicking over someone's... There's a two. treasure chest there, I think, is maybe the idea. Is there anything in it? Nope, I just put my boot down. <laughs> the little boot boost. Oh. oh. So you got 7%, so yeah. you did better than me. Still poor. So, again, like, this is, like, a cool game. I think it's hard to go back to this. Maybe, yeah. I think at the time, this would be a fun game to... Dump there's like, some time into and yeah, explore it. Yeah, there's some ideas in this that I like, but without having like the endless amount of free time as a kid that I had, uh, and no games to the play. The patience is really the thing. Yeah, yeah. It's not you, it's us. 
I Poor apologize, game. Nightlore. UPTG, ultimate play of the game. Nick, should we be a knight, a wizard, or a surf? We should be a surf. You think so? Not enough games about surfdom, is what I, I always say that. This is attic attack. Uh, um, that's not how you spell attic, though. Or attack, as it turns out. <laughs> uh, it's a tick attack. That's what it looks like, yeah. Paddy whack. Uh, this is. Uh, how do I even describe this game? Uh. It's like a weird horror game, I guess? <laughs> about bouncing guys off the wall. like a haunted house. Um, you've got a, a, Look out. a turkey leg on the, le the right side that there. That is horrifying. Um, and you have to find food to like stay alive. And get gold keys or something? Um, and you can pick up keys to open doors. And you can fall down here. And that's that little thing to show oh that we're falling. God. Scary. Um, there's some food. Let's pick that up. Kill this bat. Um, th this is like... Uh, of, of the old... Uh, rare stuff, and the reason that this is a little bit further up in the list than some of the other stuff, like like Night Lore, um, it's it's one of the ones that I found a little bit more like it's still confusing, but it's a little bit more playable. At it least. looks snappy, like it looks pretty fast paced. Yeah, it is. Um, although I'm noticing I didn't play as the Surf before. He's got a little like you stop pressing forward and he still moves forward a little bit. Mm, he's got the Luigi physics going on. Yeah. Um, I like the... I always like bouncing projectiles off walls in games, and this game seems to have that in spades. Yeah, it has a lot of that going on. We need to find some keys here is what we're looking for. So if you notice any keys, oh. let me know. And See, we'll a big thing says 1884 on it, which is actually the year this game was released. Oh. Not a lot of people know oh, that. it's like a secret. You can pass right through there. Um, so you, yeah, you can get to some of these door, some of these rooms, and it's like, oh, the doors are closed, and you just have You're to You're going to get killed by this ponytail Frankenstein. I'm, it, uh, you should admit, like, Ponytail Frankenstein would be the scariest this one. Is a, yeah, I see what you mean by it. Okay, got so a I got key? a blue key. So any blue locks I can now open. Maybe we can pass through here? now. Um, they got you looking for secrets, though. My turkey is slowly diminishing, so I need to keep an eye out for food. <laughs> I like that that's a turkey meter. Oh, no. And yeah, that's that's also just your energy, so when you get hit, that just goes down. Oh, there's some food. Delicious. Is that gum I think I got stick there? of gum. You Patch your turkey back together. Oh, I got, I got picked up some liquor, a, a liquor bottle. Is that? Ooh, I'm seeing like crucifixes and liquor. This game, I don't think this would fly in the United States. <laughs> I, don't, I, I mean, I assume it got released in the United States at some point. Maybe not. Oh, frightening pumpkin. A haunted blob. So yeah, your whole your whole goal in the game is just to escape, essentially. So okay. you're. Um, you're learning. I, as far as I can tell, it's, it's difficult to tell with this game because there's so many rooms and they're so similar looking. Uh, oh. Did I hurt you? I don't... I think it's hurting me. Um, A framing skeleton! But there's so many rooms and they're so similar looking, I can't really tell if uh, if this is like randomly generated in any way. Mm. Um, if, I feel like it is. But it could also just be that it's not, but the rooms look really samey. Yeah. The, kind of the weird thing about a game like Rare Replay is, like, your job isn't to review a tick attack. A tick attack. It's, you got to play all 30 of these games, and, like, have, putting in the time to memorize the floor pattern on each of them is a lot of... Oh, yeah. I like, mean, that's you a know, huge ask. Uh, and, and to be clear, like, this, this video isn't even necessarily what I would call a review. Right, right, right. Uh, this is just our, like, weird little feature we did on the side. But, yeah, from the review perspective, it's more about, like... How is this as a collection? Right. Which again, I in my opinion, uh, it's a pretty pretty awesome collection, um, and worth worth owning even if you don't love a tick attack. And like the cool thing about this this video or video series, depending on how you look at it, is they're only gonna get more exciting from here if you if you did a good job of ranking them, Phil. Which which I think I did. We'll see, uh, Nick. I know you disagree. So far, you're angry that. Uh, a tick attack is not number one. Yes, I can, well, you know what I will say. I think this is the best game we've seen so far. It looks the most fun. It looks the most responsive. So, in that regard, I don't know what you're trying to do with this uh, alligator carpet, can... this liquor. Oh, what do you make? So much stuff going on in this room. There's a lot of thematic similarities between these early uh, Ultimate Play the Game games. A lot of picking up seemingly nonsensical items and carrying them around. A lot of limited inventory space seems to be a recurring theme in, mm. in Rare games, I'm discovering. Uh, early Rare games in particular. I died. Uh, this is Attic Attack, or a tick Attack, depending on how you're, how you're feeling at the That's moment, the I guess. That's the scariest ghost I've ever seen in my life. And uh, 
It's a pretty, pretty weird but cool game. Woo! Nick, help! You're, you're doing, getting knocked around by all these you're doing, you're doing monsters. Flips. Look at those flips. Uh, this, this is, is Flipmaster. This is Underworld with an E. Uh. Underworld D. Um, and this is a game about doing cool flips, I guess, mostly. Um, I believe this is the same character from Saberwolf and Night Lore. Hmm. Um, the the point of the game is you're supposed to basically go into the depths. You can see our depth oh. meter there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's, it's got funky. a it's got a very interesting weird platforming system. Oh, I like this rope. What are you I'm throwing gonna, exactly? Oh. Uh, so I picked up a slingshot, and I am uh, I'm tossing stones around. Um, do you take fall damage? Yeah. So the the interesting thing about or one of the interesting things about this game is. All these like weird Cthulhu monsters and squids and stuff, uh, they don't actually hurt you in the sense of like you don't have like a health meter at all. Um, they just knock you around. Uh, so if you're like up on one of these bubbles, trying to ride a bubble to the top, if I can get on one of them, ugh. Um, they're gonna knock you down, and you're gonna you're just gonna fall. And if you fall a certain amount, then you're gonna die. Oh, don't and get lose touched. Life. Don't get touched. I'm gonna try not to. Uh. Um, luckily, so how do you lose then? If you fall enough and die, oh, oh like that, like that. No. See? Great, and now great. I lost Thank a life. Thank you for demonstrating that for me. Yeah, then no, that was just me, uh, me trying it out. Uh, it's it's the thing that I find so fascinating about this game is like I think it like animation wise it looks so rad. Like the the yeah. um, flips and stuff are like so like more complex in animation than I would ever expect from a game of this era. Yeah, he, like, bends his knees to jump, which is yeah, cool. Yeah. I also like uh, when you use the little hook to kind of grapple onto the roof. Yeah. That looks great. Um, so so it's it's got a lot of cool stuff happening. Uh, it's also, like, really frustrating. <laughs> I can see why. Getting knocked down and then killed by an enemy. Yeah, it's, it's interesting making that, like, the main gameplay Bonk. loop, but it's also, like, not necessarily the most fun. I wonder if this game is, like, one of the first games that had fall damage in it. I, well, actually, That's a good question. There's, what's that game about, like, landing a ship on the moon? I think that might be <laughs> the first one. Um, that might be coming up later. I don't think... Thing. Oh, you're talking about Jetpack. No, I'm talking about... They have a lot of sci-fi stuff that we're about to get to. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, this is, a, this is another one. Real cool idea. Really ambitious, I think, and a, a ton of, like, screens in this game. Like, there's something like 500 screens that you explore Jeez. in total. Um, if you're if you're good enough to get through it, which clearly I am not. If you're Phil Cola, there are four screens. There's about there's about a total of six, and then you just not get knocked. Spend most of your time on this one. Yeah, this is this is the main one, um, but it's super cool, and I think it's worth checking out. I think some people are going to get way into it uh, if you've never played it before, and you uh, can figure out the kind of wonky momentum based platforming here and make it work for you. Mm. Here we are, Nick, in the wild, wild west. Phil, where's your gun con? Uh, this, is, this is... I don't know that this game actually used any sort of system like that. This is Gun Fright. Mm -hmm. Not Gun Fight, Gun Fright. That's a, I love that name. Let me just, for the um, record... And, and it's another isometric one. Mm -hmm. This time the camera follows the player, though, which is interesting. Yes. Uh, so it's almost open world. And you can see we want, we're hunting down Buffalo Bill, trying to find Buffalo Bill and bring him to justice and get our $350, which Bullets. doesn't seem like that much. Bullets 5, horse 50, fine 100. Yes, that is all accurate. Um, bullets oh, 10. Bullets 10. So there's a real world economy here. Things wow. are shifting around as you go. Uh, this is actually like a really complex game. Like you can actually like, oh, see, you have to see this townsperson is pointing. That means <gasps> he saw Buffalo, Buffalo Bill? Bill's in this direction somewhere. We're going to get him. We're going to want to... See if we can find Buffalo Bill. Where are Bill. you, BB? Don't touch a cactus or we'll die. Really? Yeah. That's the old West that is accurate. Rough. It's oh, oh you God, don't touch a lady what? or you'll die. Why did I just you what both, happened? That's what happens if you touch a lady, you both turn into hats. <laughs> you turn into hats. Uh this is like a, it's I I feel like I'm saying this a lot about the race stuff, but again, this is such a cool, weird idea and super ambitious. And hard to go back to. And I just don't know what to do. Good news though, with bullets are game. back down to five dollars, so Oh thank God. It's they were really getting out of control for a while. I don't there. think he's in jail yet. I think you might wanna Well the person was pointing. Yeah, but like he meant generally. 
Here, east to the east. Ah. Don't touch the lady. Don't touch the lady. Don't shoot the lady. What are you doing? I'm gonna just don't. This kid misled me. And no, it's... he's okay. Well, now you're now Buffalo Bill's gonna turn you in for a reward. I'd like to see him try. Get out of here. You have two bullets left. Save one of them for BB. All right, one bullet left. What? Oh, there you go. I just had to pay for him. That's see, that's the. Well, it's the bullet economy is a real buyer's economy right now. It's down to five bucks, so it's, sure. I'm feeling bullish about bullets. Uh, ugh. Get out of my way, lady! Don't even. When it says, f oh my gosh, you're just dumping. When it says fine a hundred, uh, does that mean there's a hundred dollar fine for killing ladies and boys? I wonder. Uh, let me let me try killing one and see. Yeah, mm, that's not really what I was saying. <laughs> no, it's you're right. For science, we should. All right, you are at one thousand sixty West bucks. <laughs> Wild West Bucks. WBs. Let's see. Let's see if it goes down when you shoot this lady. You yep, you lost $100 for nice. hatifying that lady with your hat gun. This is my favorite game. <laughs> oh, that boy. Point, you're pointing at a wall, buddy. Don't leave him alone. Okay. I think I killed someone by accident there. Oh, no, I had to reload. That's what it was. Fine, BB. Is that oh, him? Is that... That's him. Oh, he had, he had... He didn't even have to shoot you. He just touched you. I don't even know if that was him for sure, but I feel like it was. Go back. Come on. We're, I'm not... I refuse to let you in this video until you... You want me to kill Buffalo Bill. You gotta. And I don't care how many children or innocent towns ladies have to die to make it happen. We need that yeah. 350 bucks. At the very least, we could break even from all the murdering you've been doing. <laughs> all the wanton just killing? Now I want, like, wantons. Mm. Don't say that. That lady's in your way, and she might hatify you. Please don't. Where are, you, where are you at, BB? I like how the houses kind of disappear when the camera gets in the way. That's smart. It's a cool, like... It's kind of impressive how much detail they were able to get across. Yeah. With with so little Faces power to work stuff with. Faces that yeah. they accomplish in, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's 10 pixels for his entire face. And they still... He's got a big old nose. This is basically Red Dead Redemption, right? It's very similar. Get on that horse. Oh, I, you can actually. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Those are your legs. Well. Those are definitely your legs. Uh, I don't think is this so. like a pretend town? <laughs> oh, I just ran you over that don't person. Stample that lady. Stample. You stampled her. Where's BB? All right, BB is to the lower right, according to that boy. Wait, where? Where was? There's a boy to the upper left who's saying like, BB, lower right. Oh, the horse died. I think. Oh, come on. You're gonna get him. Get your get your shooting hand ready. It's always ready. Stay away from walls, because the lady might corner you and turn you into a hat. <laughs> so I think you can actually go into, like, shootouts when you actually find these people. That's exciting. Um, like that pseudo-first-person view we saw at the beginning? Yeah, exactly. Also, it's weird that at the beginning, that determines how much money you start with. Is like, just this weird mini-game. It's like, how I, many bags of cash can you shoot? That's I do not. I want to read, like, the the manual that came in this game. I want them to explain why touching ladies turns you it's, into a I mean, the manual's in here. I need an answer. They, that is super confusing. I don't understand why the ladies uh, are like this. I think because there needs to be some obstacle besides BB. This Although, I, I will say... Um, this touching boys turn you into a hat. That's my uh, answer. I will say that that is also what... Oh, is he in jail? He's not in jail. I don't think you get to collect a reward if you walk into a jail and shoot up. Oh my gosh. Are you guys Buffalo Bill? You collected their hats, so there's no evidence. <laughs> hit the bodies. That's what it is. Alright. I just One more encounter with Buffalo Bill and then we can wrap this up. But this is this is the coolest game so far. It's, it's, it's a really interesting thing. Like, I can't imagine putting in the time to, like... There he is! Get, your, get ready to shoot. Don't let him touch you again. Blast him. Blast him in the back. Yes. Yeah. I think we're going to go and do a thing now. Oh, my God. Get him. I think he got me. <laughs> Game got over. Me. Uh, you know what? I'm kind of psyched because you were a menace. And this is, you this, need, need to be put down. This is Gun Fright, uh, an incredible Wild West uh, open world RPG experience. It, it's really good. Who needs a Red Dead Redemption sequel? Lunar Jetman. This is Lunar Jet Man. Lunar Jet Man. Uh, so this is one of the earlier games, I think, in the collection, certainly. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's not the earliest, but it is one of the earlier I, ones. I think this is the sequel to Jetpack, right? Well, 
sequel is, is spiritual successor. Sequel is a weird way of putting it. They have a lot of games that are clearly like building off of some of the same yeah. stuff they were doing in Jetpack. Yeah. And this is one of them, but we, we haven't got to Jetpack well, yet. So people watching may not even know what Jetpack that's is. That's right. Well, that's... It's a um, mystery. But the cool thing about this game is is basically your your whole goal is you're just driving this big lunar lander over uh, over the moon and mm -hmm. picking up... Oh my gosh. Oh, trying uh, not to die. Filling in... Oh. <laughs> There's so much space garbage. You're filling in bridge, little bridge segments as you go. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> it's alright. I hate it it's so much. I like this game a lot, actually, which is why it's where it is on the list. It's, um, yeah, it's... But it's, it is, it is, it can be so frustrating sometimes. It's a little cheap. It's a, it's oh, cheap so in the way stuff. that old arcade games could be oh very my god. cheap. <laughs> Did you see that? I, uh, the moon hates you, Phil. It does. The moon really hates you. Your point, though, is you're supposed to be, like, oh my god, exploring uh, the moon and uh, getting your, your lunar lander to these various uh, bases, mm -hmm. which I think we're actually going this way now. Perfect, perfect. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty into it, I'm, even though I'm clearly not very good at it. That's okay. I mean, not all of us were meant to be on the moon. Oh, uh, I was meant to be on the moon, though. Oh, <laughs> well, I think the moon wasn't meant for you, is maybe what's going on. With ah, me. <laughs> I really like Lunar Jet. Don't take, how, don't take my gameplay as a reason to not play this, because I think it's really good. And... You should play it. Look at my poor Lunar Land. Oh, oh, I got... What I, I can't understand. spawn without getting hit in the face by a meteor. I don't get that your your lander is doing fine, but the slightest touch and you die. No, that's the whole point. The it's whole the, point it's is the fragility of in, human life. You get inside the lander and you're safe. And like what I if I was playing really well, what I would be doing is <laughs> Is that what you'd be doing? What I would if be doing is well. jumping inside the lander immediately. <laughs> every time. <laughs> but I gotta get this bomb on it. I know. And you it's have to really hop important. up. Oh, like, no. That's the challenge of the game. Oh my god! You have to leave the lander to pick up the bombs. You have to leave the lander to uh, set up bridges. Yes. And every time you die, it creates another gap in there. So you have to Ooh. even more nice set up work, bridges. Bear. And I don't. Good, good shooting, Han Solo, on that one. I like. Oh no! Oh, I Not blew the... up the bomb. Don't, don't drop the. Oh my god! You're doing good. I'm proud of you. You did it. Okay. Nice. Oh. oh. I give up. This is Lunar Chat Man, but it is, it is really good. I promise. It's a Don't, good game. It's fun sometimes when you're not bad at it. This is a good game for people who are good at games. I can be some when I. You can sometimes. be. I know. I. I. Oh. I've seen it. I played all of Bloodborne. I know you beat Bloodborne. On video. On it. There's like proof. I'm a speed run of Lunar Jetman coming to a Polygon YouTube channel near you soon. Yay! Phil, is this what I think it is? It is, Nick, and also Danielle Rando, who's joined us in the midst of us recording this. I couldn't miss being grabbed by the ghoulies. Welcome to the skeleton party. <laughs> yep, this is it. The yawning skeletons. So this was, this was the, I remember, the thing about grabbed by the ghoulies that I remember is... This was Rare's first big new release when they got purchased by Microsoft. Yeah, post acquisition. Oh, yeah. Um, not counting any of the Game Boy Advance games, they continued to just finish. This was like the the big new one. Oh yeah. Oh. Smash this. on the original Xbox. On the original Xbox, and it got a lot of hate because people were like, "Oh, this is not what I wanted Rare to make." It's a baby game, Phil. It's a game for children. Uh, so there are weird things about this. Like, oh, I didn't want to. I wanted to pick that up. <laughs> like the, the, the friendly fire is one of the weird things about it. I like that we, they see bats instead of birds when they... That's, you know, that's a that's nice good. touch. Uh, that's a good rare detail. The way that I'm yeah. attacking here is actually just with the right analog stick. Oh, right. Um, so I'm just pointing that in the direction of them, and then I do a little... Do a so little. I, may oh. have, uh, I may have overstated my... My feelings. So as we were going, as we were preparing to record this, you were like, "I adore Grab by the Ghoulies. It's the game of the forever." It is. And if you had told me that in 2015 I would finally get the chance to experience Grab by the Ghoulies uh, in 1080p 60, 
I would have called you a liar. Sure. I would have said I already had my heart broken once by Phantom Dust. This can't happen twice oh. with old Xbox games. My, my main memory of this game was getting it on an original Xbox demo disc and playing that demo of it over and over and thinking that it was pretty all right. Sure. Now, you were also pretty young in 2005. I, you yes. were like five, I have to right? Say, yeah. yeah. Uh, that may have had something to do with this. I was, well, I was Perhaps. 15. So at, okay. I was actually, I think, slightly outside the, the demographic for this game. Because sure. I think this game was... Uh, rare trying to make an Xbox game for, like, younger kids. Like, yeah. And something that I don't think the Xbox ever really did succeed at capturing. Um, and so I think a lot of people found this game to be, like, a little overly simple for them. Um, I have to say, looking at it, it actually looks a lot like the uh, Wii version of that Ghostbusters game from, like, six years ago. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it kind of looks like it controls not too dissimilarly as yeah. well. I think yeah. one of the cool things about this um, is that unlike all the Xbox 360... Oh, my God. Look at that. That's real size, oh. too. The, yeah, exactly. The original Xbox did come in a box that was the size of a child, yep. of a yep. young boy. And, and, the, and the original the, controller. The yeah. Wait, what are, what are the games on that shelf to the right? There's a whole shelf with, like, Xbox oh, wow. games on it. you got to go. I'll wreck this stuff. I hate kids. Oh, oh. Uh, where was this? Uh, go to the right. Keep going to the right. Uh, what is there? Look what is this? this stuff? Okay. A tick attack. There's a tick attack. Okay. Uh, uh, Conquer's bad for a day. Oh, Conquer! I love the idea that Attic Attack got a release on the Xbox. That is, is super that not Saber true. Wolf? That might be Saber it Wolf. It is. Uh, so and a lot of the games that we've been playing... Yeah, thanks to Rare Replay, I get these references. <laughs> yeah, um, you probably wouldn't have it. Oh, definitely yeah. not. Oh, he jumped through the window. Conquer! Kick the Conquer! Um, this is neat, and I, what's cool about this is that those 360 games in this collection are just being emulated, like, same crappy frame rate, same everything. This game is running natively on the Xbox One at 1080p60, on, like, they're, they are running the game engine uh, on the Xbox One hardware in full, yeah. and it looks kind of beautiful. I think, I, like, I think the Attic, uh, attic Attack... Oh, that's Greg from Bad Fur Day, too. And uh, that other poster right there. Oh, yeah? Uh, the death. Yeah, Greg with two Those Gs. I'm glad right I knew there. that. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's Greg. It's also, uh, they definitely cleaned up the textures, right? There's yeah. no way an original Xbox game had textures this clean. Yeah, this looks pretty pretty sharp. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just running at a higher uh, resolution. Yeah. So it looks nicer. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the Attic Attack references make sense, because this is kind of like the... I, I can almost see this as like the the evolution of that. The game. spiritual success. Yeah. Oh, look at this guy. Why is Waluigi coming to get you? So that's yeah, the right? main villain, and he's just like, I'm just gonna lower your health by half. Do you think this what was originally sure? Waluigi's mansion, and then when Nintendo sold Rare to Microsoft, they were like, Absolutely. all right, we can't we can't use Waluigi. We just have to make it. Some, I guarantee that's exactly what some happened. Nondescript oh man. This was the Waluigi game we always wanted. The true story. Behind, you know, behind the curtains. And now we know. Grabbed by the ghoulies. It's originally a wall. Behind the attic curtain here. Clearly. Oh, this, this uppercut. This combo system is robust. It, <laughs> well, I'm just... It's... It's something, okay? It, it is... I mean, I'm thing. not, like, controlling when I do any of these moves. It's literally just pointing in that direction. <laughs> the stick. Yeah, that was kind oh. of a... Oh. oh, boy. And so one of the other things that this game has, and I don't know that we're gonna, we're gonna get to any of it because I don't think we're gonna play for too much longer on this video. Bullshit. Uh, <laughs> oh, is this the full <laughs> let's play? Speak for yourself. We're going to we're gonna beat grab by the ghoulies. Today. Oh, retro. Uh, let's play. Uh, <laughs> but one of the other things that it does is like there's these weird segments where you're like walking through a hallway in first person, um, and then there will be jump scares. Whoa, really? And in order to survive, in order to not take damage, you have to press a a series of buttons. Like a basically a quick time event to prove that you didn't get scared. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, did you get spooked? Prove it by pressing A B A X Y. And it's like, I don't. I have nothing to prove to you. I don't know why Rare spent any time making this propaganda designed to make kids fearless. That I don't. The only thing that they should be scared of skeletons. Yeah. I mean, skeletons are pretty creepy. In my opinion. You know. Uh, looks like we're going this way now. Oh, good. Um, good. We, I think we fear skeletons for a reason. There's a reason that God made us that way. For okay, us. so here we go. Yeah, okay, this is like going to be one of these segments. So if this is scary, I'm going to have to leave. <laughs> Just be ready. What does it... Anything... Go oh. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Oh, I guess it's not going to do it. It looked While like Luigi's it was going to. watching you. You know, in, in fairness to the people who didn't like this game back in the day, imagine like 
Rare had just come off of like yeah. iconic games like Banjo and Tooie and Tooie and Donkey Kong 64, whether you love it or hate it. Like they're the the rare that made those very iconic games. And Goldeneye and Golden Dark. Like, like yeah. To go from that to this, I can see being a little disappointed. Oh yeah. Spider. In case you didn't know what that was. Yeah. You Remember know, this if game you is were for, confused. I just did a I just did an elbow drop on that spider. <laughs> <laughs> so are you maybe reconsidering where you put this game on the list? No, you elbow this drop the spider. The best game. I, the number yeah. one game. This looks uh Look at the little splats too on the floor there. Man, grab by the ghouls is cool. Good splats. Well, I, there's I do dancing think, ghouls over I will there. I will say, you know, obviously this didn't make it super high on our list, but I do think it maybe got more hate than it deserves. Yeah. Um, and it's not like... It, it, I do not think it is a great game, but it's also... It's not as bad as people say. Sure. People oh, were very yikes. upset. This is a... I'm trying to rescue... What is she doing that's, here? That's my I sister, like her I think. Shoes. I'm trying to rescue her. I want those shoes. Are you, are you gonna? Or no? Well, it looks like no. It looks like I'm just gonna leave her there. <laughs> Alright, Phil. So. <laughs> oh no! They, they really took the whole Resident Evil window scare thing oh. to like a whole new level, didn't they? Made a whole game about it. Yeah, this... <laughs> the bat thing is pretty good, the seeing bats. Yeah, that is, that's that's maybe my favorite thing clever. so far. I don't think I would have noticed that, Danielle, if you hadn't pointed it out, but it's I'm, it's great. I was charmed by that. Alright, we don't need any more cutscenes. This is Grab by the Ghoulies, though. I think it's maybe better than it has a reputation for, and, and I think it would be cool if being part of this collection means more people check it out and are like, oh yeah, this isn't, you know, maybe removed from the context of when it came out, yeah. it's not as bad as we thought it was. Like Mario Sunshine, you know? Mm. Mario Sunshine's not that good, though. What? I like Mario Sunshine. I love go. Mario Sunshine. Alright, Danielle, this one oh, yeah. is Digger T. Rock. Digger T. Rock. Legend of the Lost City? Ooh. Um, so this is like a basically like a 2D Tomb Raider situation going okay. on here. Kill oh, with things. a with a great whacking animation with your shovel here. Yes. You shovel Knight the first, perhaps. Well, I mean, this game came out in what the early 90s or late 80s. Oh gosh, this uh, is an oldie for sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually have the the year uh, on this on the title screen sure, here sure. when people see this video because I can't remember the exact year but it would be I think I think believe this was like early 90s sure um, and it, it's it is a, a game about you know finding well, treasure so happy. running through these levels um, I love the look of it yeah and I think it actually feels really good as well it's very difficult oh yeah it these old platformers were, they were oh oh that's a bonus Hard level, so like it's okay. Rock? That's a bonus level, so it's okay. Yeah. It's okay, we were supposed to die there. It's normal. Um, I love his animation. He's so expressive, this little dude. This Digger T. Rock. And again, like, that's coming across over and over again in these rare games. Is like yeah. the, the level of animation they have is pretty impressive. Um, I also do like the, like, the digging stuff in this. I like how it works. Would you, you say a, that you dig it? You have a, you have a lot of freedom. <laughs> Um, I I have to say, um, certainly compared to most older games, older uh, 2D platformers, he, he seems like a big Whoa. sprite. Well, I think I was supposed to use a ladder I, I there. I think so. Maybe you didn't. How do I? How do I oh, hmm. Okay. I see. There you go. You just gotta crawl your way to freedom. Oh, okay. Nice. Well, I know how to do it now, sort of. Um, so I was familiar with this game, but I hadn't actually played it. So you're, you were ahead of me. When I got the Rare Replay Collection, I had not heard of this. I had no idea what it was. Um, I think we're going to use this dynamite to blow Ooh, this stuff up. Nice. If I can do that correctly. There we go. Oh, Whoa. well, at least you killed a giant mosquito. Maybe that doesn't Maybe work. you just can't go this way. That may be it. But yeah, he, he seems like a big sprite, which is kind of interesting because that allows him to be even more expressive than I think most... Yeah. You know, platformer characters were at the time. Like, he's smiling and he does a little dance when he finishes a level. It's really cool. He's very happy. Yeah, he's he's happy to be in these mines. I mean, if I guess if your name is Digger T. Rock, you're, you know, you're happy when you're in the mines there. That's where you belong. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty into this. I, I think it's really cool. I will say uh, it gets real difficult later on. 
Um, much, much more so than these first levels are showing off. Sure, sure. Um, which is not uncommon in Rare games. Uh, oh yeah, certainly. Whoa. Now, I'm gonna ask you, Phil, and I'm not sure if Nick asked you this already, but are there any games that you're particularly uh, sad that because of licensing reasons or whatever were not in the Rare Replay collection? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I like the... Oh, this... Uh, oh. I like the I like the Donkey Kong Country stuff. I would have liked to have seen that. Certainly. Um, yeah, those are among my favorite games uh, ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think Donkey Kong Country is cool. And even, like, Donkey Kong 64, like, I don't... I actually just never really played that, so sure. I, I would have liked to have had that just for the sake of, like, experiencing it. Oh, that's a fascinating game. It's not a great game, but it's a fascinating game that's for what it what is. That's sort of what I have heard. Yeah, certainly. Um, I'm a little sad. Uh, my big one is Diddy Kong Racing. Oh, sure, That was a yeah. great game. A truly awesome, you know, single-player mascot racer that had a lot more to it than I think the single player in any other mascot racer ever has. <laughs> um, I've passed this level, but I apparently can't now. Look at the dinosaur. Oh man, there. there's a dinosaur uh, over there. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, Digger T-Rock, I think, is... This is one that I can actually, compared to a lot of the older stuff that I've said, you know, it's hard to go back to. Sure. I can see myself playing more of this in the future and trying to figure out how to do better at it, not, how to not be totally atrocious like yeah. I am now. Well, you know... Practice makes perfect when you're digging in some rocks. That's what they say? Yep, that's I guess. my philosophy in life. Here we go, Danielle. Here's oh, here, Cameo. Here we go, Cameo. Elements of Power. Uh, launch Xbox 360 game. Yep. Um, we are right over at the beginning of the game here, so we're going to be seeing some cutscenes and some tutorial stuff. Um, I would say, yep. uh, better launch game than Perfect Dark Zero. Sure, sure. Still, Fair. Uh, you know, still very much a launch game in the sense that, like, it's very rough. Um, it, it felt like they were just starting to tap into the potential of the new system and hadn't quite figured out how to make it good yet. I remember being so pumped for this game. And sure. It's just a rare, you know, a huge rare fan from the yeah. N64 heyday. Sure, absolutely. And, you know, I kind of looked at screenshots of this and looked at sort of the concept of this, which is, you know, you're, you have all these powers and you become all these different creatures, basically, throughout the game, and it's a 3D platformer. I, I thought this would be, you know, perhaps naively, a little bit of a callback to those glory days. And yeah, I well, remember it not quite, <laughs> Well, I think, maybe. <laughs> I think maybe what you're talking about is, like, you look at the aesthetic of this game. Yeah, this you look is at what colorful doing, and, and you know. And it looks like it looked like they were going that they were going for a platformer. Mm -hmm. um, but it turns out this game's not even really a platformer at all. Yeah, it's more of a it's combat like a, brawler kind of. Yeah, it's like dealio. a an action game with with some like exploration ele like elements, but it's not really at all what I would call a uh, a platformer. Yeah. Except when you do stuff like this, I guess. I guess it's a little platform. Just a little bit of Metroid Prime, right there, right. <laughs> this, the <laughs> smallest amount. The tiniest of little hint of Metroid Prime. Yeah, I think this is part of what I got excited about was it. It kind of looked like an N sixty four game. It, well, prettier, but it you know looked like an N sixty four game, and I hadn't had one of those in a while. At this point, two thousand five or so, and yeah. you know, I was missing those games. You know, sure. I was missing them, but. We all were. Yeah, I think we all were a little bit. There. To some degree. Yeah, some of us more than others, certainly. Yeah. But uh, I was. You more than most. I people, had the flag raised. Yes, me more than anyone, maybe. I had I had my flag raised for sure. So you've actually played a little more of this recently. Yes, and I've also, you know, when it came out, I played it pretty much. I mean, I bought a 360 probably uh, six months after it had launched, and sure. there still wasn't much to play on it. And, and I was also in that same camp of like, oh, I loved Rare's platforming stuff, so yeah. maybe I'll love this. So I ended up renting this and playing it pretty much to completion, I think. Nice. Um, it is a shorter game, isn't it? I remember that also kind of being a thing. Like, uh, yes. at the time, you know, that's not really a big deal anymore, but at the time, a big launch game being only, you know, a few hours Whoa. of gameplay was, oh, was like that. It was that feeling. Don't worry about it. For some people. <laughs> Here we go. The turtling power. I mean, I know she's not a turtle, but she looks like she's turtling. Yeah, so this was like the the interesting thing about this game. Um, 
was the like ability to transform into different characters. So you can be this. Well, let's try that again. There we go. You can be this like little ball thing that lets you. It can be that go up green ramps. plant thing. Yeah, you can be a plant that's this is like more of your attacking thing. Yeah. And then you've got this big guy who can. Uh, you can climb ice. Climb I think. and yeah. like yeah, you can grab enemies real quickly and. Which is actually a cool concept. You um, know, so it's, like it's this guy here. I think we can actually go. Under oh, him. nice! Oh, no. Oh, well, that worked. <laughs> nice go. uppercut again with the uppercuts. <laughs> Grab by the ghoulies had an uppercut. This has an uppercut. Look at this. Um, but yeah, I, I, I liked the powers thing. I thought that was pretty cool. It, it's like a callback to learning, you know, or having certain moves in something like a Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Talon Trot. Instead of that, you have, you know, the character with three different moves. I also remember being uh, sort of interested in sort of the character designs. <laughs> Sure. In this game, I mean, I actually kind of like the enemy design. It's very classic, rare, really expressive, sort of goofy goons. And things yeah, like I think that. the game the game has in general a very rare look to it. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's this guy. Oh, there's a little fire demon there. Little, little buddy. Looks a lot like an enemy in Conquer, actually. He's dead. Oh no, we can't have that. Advanced technique! Oh, time to hurl that troll. I think. Whoa. Oh, nice. Do you have to set fire to that bridge or something? Oh. This is some advanced puzzle solving right here. Advanced chilla techniques. Oh, there we're we using. Go. There it is. Brutal carnage! It's a little bit complicated. There's a lot of moves here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I don't think this is a bad game, though. Uh, yeah. And certainly, again, compared to something like Perfect Dark Zero, which was very right. disappointing and I think doesn't hold up at all, there's still some cool stuff to be had in this one. Yeah. You know, weirdly, this kind of looks like um, a Skylanders game to me, almost, right now. You know, more of an action-oriented game than a platformer with different characters and yeah. different kind of powers. But it's, still a decent core game. You know, decent core game. It's definitely, and again, this is almost like the Grab by the Ghoulies thing. It's having... Removing this from context, I think it might be better than, yeah. uh, than when it came out and when people had certain expectations about what they thought this might be and what they wanted it to be. Certainly, um, yeah. So I think it might be... It might be something that is easier to go back to now. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Cameo! Kinda not that bad. It's alright, I guess. Yeah, not, not bad. Not a bad game. <laughs> it's, it's okay. We should stop playing it, though, because otherwise we're gonna complete it, and then Nick will be angry that we didn't yeah. get really grabbed by the ghoulies. That's, that's gonna happen. Okay, Nick, here we are on the planet of Preludon. Land this ship. Land this pod. Uh, this is Solar Jetman. Jetman, Jetman. Jetman. Uh, oh, boy. Quest for the Golden... Search for the... Hunt for the Golden something? I don't know. It's got a weird subtitle. Oh, God, you're, you're free of that awful pod, and you were yeah, standing on top of a bullet. Uh, this, is, this is a very strange uh, sci-fi adventure game where... Okay... I think we want this thing. There's only one way to find out. So we want to. Uh, you got it. Yeah, but we got to take it back to our base with us. I but think. Don't get owned. Come so on. the the way that this game works is like, like full on gravity is in effect, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and you there's there's like this sense of momentum to your rockets that is really strange and really hard to get, uh, to get a hold on. I like how many different angles they drew the ship at. When oh. it rotates, it's got a nice of nice uh, detail. Alright, my probes are now equipped with shields. I like that. That's good. Are you is that what this is? Is this one of the probes right now? Yeah, oh, so boy. we're in those and if I hit down then I suddenly have I'm shielded a little bit. Um, so this is a game about basically exploring uh, exploring these planets and finding upgrades and finding what you need to uh, to leave and go to the next planet. Hmm. Um, 
I actually think this is a really cool. Uh, my only issue, the only reason that this didn't rank a little bit higher for me, is just because of how like impossible it is to get used to these control, like to this thing. momentum. Like it's so, it's so much harder to control than any other momentum-based thing that I have ever played in my life. It's got kind of a um, like pixel junk shooter vibe. Yeah, it's totally in that same vein. Um, and in fact, I would not at all be surprised if this were like part of the like something that influenced uh, influenced those guys. It was diamond. Oh my god, I want this diamond real bad. It must be harder to control than it looks. It's so hard. Do you want to try it? Yeah, Maybe yeah, you yeah. Should try it. it. All right, here we go. So what is boost? A. A. All right. Because it looks. Oh wow. Yeah, it really. You gotta. You have to really give it a lot to boost in a direction. Yeah, you but really then, do. And that means, like, switching back then. How do I pick this up? Uh, X, maybe? X. X is usually the pick-up item button. Um, Ooh. Oh, by oh, the way, you can what? rewind. Oh, I love that feature. That's You can do that on all of the old games. I don't know if I can... If there's a thing... I don't know if that diamond is the you next might need to be able. You might need to actually leave your ship to get it, which would be more difficult. Alrighty. Yeah, this is weird, because the way I thought it worked was that there was gravity, but then it behaves like there's not, except for when there is. Oh, I like how the bullets can kind of steer you off path. That's <laughs> horrific. Oh, there's the fuel. We right, need I that. It. I we need it. the fuel real bad. This shield is saving my butt right now. I feel like I'd be super dead if I didn't have it. You're right. very close to dead even with it. Pressing X. Pressing every button. Alright. Oh god. That's not it. B, A, X, Y, bumper, bumper, right trigger. How do I hop out of my ship? Do I have to destroy it? Try Y usually is leaving. I don't, I don't remember. This shield. Maybe I have to turn the shield off to do any of this. Press down, you said? I don't know you can turn the shield off. Oh my god. Well, maybe I'm just trapped in here with a shield for the rest of time. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is what you've become. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kill myself. Press but. pause and you can look at the manual and figure out the controls. Alrighty, let's see here. Lower shields is up on the stick. Special hold for X. Hmm. Alright. Let me lower these shields real quick. There we go. Time to get collected. Yep, there it is. <laughs> and I immediately uh... died. So if I make it back, I can get a new pod, right? Yes, you That's can. Although way. you only have two pods left. I don't need that many pods. I actually think your your little guy controls better. Yeah, he's a little snappier. But he also dies real fast. Like, any one of these bullets is going to kill you. Smashing into the walls, like, four times will kill you. All right, let me try again. I got this. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, I did not know that was how that worked. Explore. Okay. It's telling you just you do that. Okay, you're getting into a pod. Oh, I like this cutscene. That's me. There it is. This is neat. It's cool, right? It's the controls are very squirrely. You're not mistaken, but I if this controlled a little better, I think it would be one of the highlights of this package, especially as a game that I had never played previously. Oh my to god, it. it took me so long to shift my momentum and then I immediately died. I got to get those shields. Um yeah, no, for sure. I think uh, this is the type of game though I'd love to now that I know what it feels like, I'd love to see someone who's good at it play it. Yes, like, absolutely. That would be so fun. And I apologize to the people watching this video that we are not those people. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Now that I got the shield, I kind of feel like I can goof off. Do you think you can get it? Mm hmm I'm gonna get the fuel. Trust on it. Oh god. I believe in you. All right. I believe in you getting this. I'm the fuel boy. I'm the Pillsbury fuel boy. You're the fuel boy. You can make it. So the shield just lowers the damage that I take, Yeah, right? you're it's still taking damage, but it's uh, significantly lower. Gosh, it, just the amount of time it's so it takes to shift <laughs> your movement. It's not obvious from watching it, but like, the flame coming out of my ship, it, it's not doing anything! <laughs> it does right. so little! So I have to be shieldless to get this back, which is a horrifying prospect for a player like me. So what is this thing? Oh, that I, thing is gonna hurt you. Gonna shoot you it. gotta shoot it. Yeah, there Killed. you go. Get the 25 points. Come here, fuel. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. And then that thing has it, the fuel has its own momentum yeah. that is like, okay, this isn't great. I'm gonna kill it. Maybe everyone. we should give up. Alright, that's enough of this. Because it's been like five minutes. Yeah, uh, that's past its allotted time. This is a, a cool thing, though. Um, just not. Uh, the controls are not necessarily what I would want from no. them. No. 
I'd be I would if like when I sit down with this game though once once Ray replays out I would I'd be down to give it a couple shots and see if I can't progress a little bit more or maybe the uh, is that is your are you committing to this speed run of this on the Polygon yep. YouTube channel Next, coming soon yes I'll speed run this God right. that sounds so frustrating Danielle yeah Nick. hi Danielle you were talking about a sequel spiritual sequel. To, uh, to jetpack. Yeah. Here is the actual sequel. Yeah. To jetpack. I I can see that this this is uh, quite a few years later. This is Jetpack Refueled, uh, which was a released for XBLA. Um, 2007, I think. Yes. Something like that. That's correct. I remember this game. I I remember the original uh, Jetpack more than anything. I think it's worth noting that the original Jetpack is way better. Yeah. Is it? In my, be. in my opinion. Elaborate. It is higher on this list, so right. you know, I'll save so my clearly. feelings about that. Uh, but I, I don't like the art style yeah. for Jetpack Refueled at all. Um, I don't I think it's like really busy. Um, it's like it's colorful in, in a way that I think is just meant to show off like, oh look at all these particle physics and I, stuff. Yeah, I agree with you. I will say I do like the one design here for the jellyfish tentacle sure. aliens. I think those look cool, but perhaps... Yeah. It's a little bit hard to read, the action, a little bit. And I, I like the simplicity in the original jetpack of uh, as you're filling the thing up with fuel, it just is turning red. Versus yes. like having these lights that you're trying to fill up. Ooh, oh, particles. When, there when, we go. I, this is a weirdly specific thing, and maybe not the thing most games want to be remembered for, but the main thing I remember about this game was that it was $5, and there weren't really $5 games on Xbox Live <laughs> sure. at that point. It was like this in Space Giraffe, basically, but like yeah. the only two for forever. There we go, there's the You got a Chivo there. Nice. Popping these vintage Chivos mm. in more ways than one. Delicious. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I, I don't think this is bad, uh, to be clear, but I, I think compared to the original Jetpack, like, playing this, I'm like, I would just rather go back and play... Which was Old actually, jetpack. in fairness, an option, I think, even in 2007. You could play Yeah, no, and actually, the weirdly old game. enough, because this is just the XBLA version oh, put God. into Rare Replay, so you can you can play Jetpack in Rare Replay, or you can play Jetpack in Jetpack Re Refuel and in Rare Replay. Presumably, <laughs> that means that there are separate achievements for the this I version. I believe there oh, are. Man. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, my God. Can we see it? Just a... Just a hint of that at the end of this video. Oh my goodness! So, yeah, you want to go check that? Yeah, we can I do. Check that out. Uh, so art style aside, does it, it feels okay though, right? Oh like, yeah, I mean you know this controls great. It's fine. I like how when, as soon as you give jetpack semi realistic graphics, the fact that lasers come out of the top of the gun cease to make any sense yeah. whatsoever. It just looks really goofy. It's, it's kind of like it's coming out of his helmet or yeah, sort of. <laughs> There's a tiny thing on top of his gun that's oh, sort see. of pointing up, but I it's see. like. But uh, it's yeah, it's not quite the. A bit later. The elegant symbol. <laughs> oh, you're good at this one. I like yeah, jetpack a lot. I think jetpack's really fun. Yeah, it is fun. Uh, let's let's actually go look at. It. Yeah, I want to see it. Let's take a look at this. Oh my goodness. It's a single player retro. retro. It's nice. a recreation of the original jetpack. Okay. Oh. Yeah, no, this is just the original jetpack. Yeah. <laughs> did, did they use the same border? Oh, uh, for... we're gonna find out very shortly. Oh, right, because it's higher on the list. We haven't seen it yet. Yeah, yeah. we have not. This is a good game. We're spoiling later in the video. Oh. Cover your eyes if you don't want one of our higher numbers on the list. I cover. loved how your lasers wrapped around the screen. Yeah. I always thought that was a really great it's a cool touch. Thing. And it's just like so much more dense. And yeah. the, the way that you stack the ship is just so visually satisfying. The way those pixels line up perfectly. Uh, that's yeah, that's great. That's really this nice. Is, I think you might be right. I think this might be a better I, game. I just, I dig Jetpack a lot. I mean, I, listen, I enjoy Jetpack Refueled and it's still playing Jetpack basically. And I think yes. that's like, that gameplay is just really fun. Uh, but I think I think this is really rad. I also just, just love, satisfying. I love games that had this simple visual language that just feels kind of perfect. Like yeah. no element feels out of place here. Yeah, this is that's like a good way yeah. and especially looking at a lot of the old. Okay, wait, we should stop because I'm gonna. Uh, we're gonna talk a lot about Jetpack <laughs> yeah, yeah, very yeah. shortly. Sure, so, sure. Uh, but Jetpack Refueled is is pretty all right. I just like go play the regular Jetpack in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. The fight people have been waiting for. Oh yeah. Danielle versus Phil. Ever since Bloodborne. Is Kim is Kim in the new Fulgore? Killer Instinct. You're asking the wrong people, I believe. Oh my god, this game controls like 
It's like I remember. <laughs> so this is a uh, Killer Instinct Gold. Uh, obviously, this is the oh, based off the first Killer Instinct updated version of it. Oh my um, god, I'm not doing well. I played a lot of Killer Instinct as as a, a young Phil uh, who owned an SNES. <laughs> um, and I, oh god, in retrospect, do not think this is very good. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I actually very recently played quite a bit of Mortal Kombat 2, around the same era, 94, 95, sure. I think, around the same era. And that holds up not too bad, you know. Uh, this does not feel as good. You have to hit continue. Sorry. I think you... Yeah. There we go. Maybe uh, I'll go with the... Uh, I'll do the Glacius. Oh. Somebody be the nudie man. Oh, the oh, skeleton, even yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. That's what I want to see. I love this dude. Spinal. 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 Uh, yeah, this is, I'm actually, one of the reasons that I think the new Killer Instinct, uh, for me is so impressive, is just because, like, they took a fighting game that really, I don't think holds up, really doesn't have that much going on, uh, and made it quite good. It, this feels like Clay Fighter. It, I was about to say, it's like <laughs> self-serious Clay yeah, Fighter. Yeah, it really, it, it really feels well, like... Well, I mean, they're from the same mold, yeah, so right. to speak. Oh. Uh, but I mean it, uh, of like, <laughs> you know, like, it's Mortal Kombat came out and was big, and then a bunch of people were like, uh, we gotta get that Mortal Kombat money. Gotta get that pre-rendered sprite fighting game that prioritizes animation over fluidity. <laughs> over, yeah, game feel, too. Glacius um, is basically bad Mr. Frosty. Oh, he totally is. Right? He is! He totally is! Uh, Clay Fighters had to come later, though, right? Blue suede goo. Oh. Gotta be in here somewhere. My goodness. Helga. Why isn't Clay Fighter? I know it wasn't a rare game, but I just oh, want Clay man. Fighter. That should remember? be on here? Sure, y yeah. <laughs> Y'all remember her? My god. Oh. Orchid is actually still in. Orchid is a classic Look at character. that cool tank. Or flying yeah. missile Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a helicopter, yeah. It's a tank with a propeller. Oh isn't my god. Isn't that all a helicopter is, Phil? This really feels so stiff. <laughs> it's really... And I, I'm sure there are people watching who are like, uh, I'm a fighting game expert, and you guys just, and don't, just know you're doing, and and right. <laughs> you're don't know what you're doing. And you're just terrible, I know, and you're Listen, you're right, but I don't know what I'm doing. That said, I still don't think this is a good fighting game. I'll just say, as someone who never played Killer Instinct and has no nostalgia for it, I hate looking at it. It's really <laughs> bad to look at. I don't like seeing it. Like, it, it with my eyes, it hurts when I have to look at it. Yeah, and I mean, you know, just to, to be fair, like, even Mortal Kombat or even, like, the Street Fighters of this era are... You're just, like, mashing punch there. I pretty much it's working. Uh, it worked, so... No, Street Fighter looks... Street Fighter's pixel art holds no, up No, 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 the pixel like, art holds up great. I'm talking more, like, playing-wise, like, those are obviously a lot stiffer than, yeah. than a lot of fighting games now. I like that Phil has, you can't tell at home, but Phil's going the claw hand technique. Oh, that's, really, how you, that's how you do fighting games. Yeah, he's going full FGC, like, Evo with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, this is my practice for Evo yeah. for next oh, year. Oh, he, he did a nice Killer battle. Instinct he did. Yeah, clearly. He's honorable. Um, can, I don't want to look at this anymore. Can you do something about this? <laughs> Let's leave. All right. All right, Danielle, Nick. Yo. Here it is, Conker's Bad Fur Day. I loved this game. You are twelve. Loved still, it. I was not day. allowed. To, I was not allowed to play this game as a boy. <laughs> I was seventeen when this came out, and I thought it was not. I, I didn't even think it was that funny. I just, I just really liked just the, like uh, the level it. design and sort of the the just irreverence of it, the tone rather than the humor. I guess you could call it. Yeah. So it felt like it was. Um, oh, nice. well. Anyway, never mind. I don't like the time of this game. <laughs> I guess we're going back. It's funny, like, it's funny how, like, even though this game has cusses and blood and, like, farts and poop, it's kind of weird how the rare, like, the N6, the rare of the N64 era kind of just made the same game four times. Like, this, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, Donkey Kong 64, they're so similar. They're really not, though, is the funny thing. Like, when you go back, uh, in retrospect... Like, it can seem like they are, but actually going back and playing them, and this is the reason that Conquer is is lower on the list than than those other games. Uh, Danielle, I don't, don't want to break your heart here, but uh, the the gameplay and level design in this game is... Oh, I just threw up. Uh, yep. yep, you sure did. Because you're game, around a farting mouse. The I mean. game and level design in this, uh, compared to uh, those other games, like is not very good. Yeah, I guess I mean, and maybe it's the uh, function of the harbor, but stylistically, like, those, oh, these gotcha. giant 
swampy oh, yeah, metal boxes, those could totally have existed in Banjo. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, yeah. Visually, it just feels like it's all one world. Everything has the same sort of droopy polygonal eyeballs and. Yeah, and that's okay. So aside from that not nice thing that just happened, um, I, I liked that this game was basically repurposed to be a, a game that made fun of Rare. It was kind of Rare making fun of itself. Yeah, saying like, was... oh, look at how goofy and, and, and not smart these kind of designs are. Let's just make fun of everything. Let's just kind of do our own little and it was side initially, show. It was initially announced as a... Uh, like it was a very it, child-friendly... Yeah, it was like a... <laughs> Conquer was like a super child-friendly, like, and happy Conqueror's squirrel. Conquer's 12 Tales, I think it was yes. originally going to be. And there was also a... There was a Conquer game on the Game Boy Color that actually totally... Yes fit that version of it. Like, the Conquer on the Game Boy Color was not the raunchy Conquer that we see here. Did that no. actually come out? It did, yeah. yeah. yeah there was Why a... isn't that on this? I, I don't know. Good I, question. They had, to, they had to pick some, I guess. That should be DLC. I, I mean, I think another opinion. thing that surprises me is why is the N64 version on here and not the remake? Because there was a remake of this game yeah. on the original Xbox called, like, Reloaded or something. That's right. Um, yeah. I'm curious why they went with this version instead. Maybe it's more iconic, a better example of Rare's history. I, I just, I'd love to hear their explanation. I would, I would like to hear that too. I, I have to say, so I'm a little sad to hear this doesn't hold up as well because I actually on, found this to be. Oh, there we go. Is that a button? What? It's no, I'm just kidding. I'm getting. You're just getting literally gassed by this mouse. Oh yikes. Um. So people talk about rare platformers being collected thons, and this was actually the antithesis of that. All you ever collected was money, and that was only ever in service of getting to the next area. Hmm. And the game actually has an interesting overworld that changes throughout the game. So as you progress and progress, it becomes nighttime, other weird things happen in the overworld. Interesting might be... Well, a stretch. <laughs> it might be a stretch. It's, it's just that the actual core game design is a bit different from those other platformers. You're not really collecting things, you're more... It's more of an adventure game structure where it's like you're solving the puzzle or solving the and area and then you get further, that kind of thing, as opposed to you collected 800 of whatever. Mm. I, I think that might be part of what I'm saying when I say the game design is bad, because that collect-a-thon <laughs> shit is at least actually like pushing you through interesting levels. Yes. And in this it's like figuring out obscure ass, like, yeah. how do I do that? I don't like... It, it, this really felt like an adventure game structure in a 3D platformer world, and that's something that Psychonauts did way better four years later. Yeah, that's a basically. good. Yeah, I like that comparison. <laughs> I, I will say, Conker's model looks from pretty good for an N64 game. Oh He's yeah, looking pretty strong. His his tail always looks like there's a balloon at the top of it. It always kind of floats up a little yeah. bit, which I really good tail enjoy. physics. Enjoy, yeah, exactly. For the era. So you have to. What you want to know what you have to do here? You have to knock out uh, a cheese and then go bring it back. I have to knock Pass. it out? Yes, you have to hit it with a with your uh. thing. <laughs> with your frying pan. Grab it and then bring it back to that flirting mouse. Yeah, I see the adventure game Yeah, design that's exactly here. what, what this is a great pretty example. much all these puzzles are. Oh, no, here. you can't. Yeah, you have to no. time it so that <laughs> you have to time it so that you go past these guys. I like that. I like the <laughs> speedrun tactic you were trying to we'll yeah, sequence nice, break, Phil. Nice, nice work. That's what they call them. Sequence break, Phil. And I'll tell you this, oh. we discovered this, discovered, whatever, in the Bloodborne playthrough, but I can sing the whole Great Mighty Crew song oh, man. from memory. Sure. That's how much I like That's this arguably, game. <laughs> and, and I say this as somebody who's not particularly fond of this game, <laughs> that's arguably the best part of the game. It's kind of great. I mean, it's it's ridiculously Phil. immature. You can do this. See, look. Pro. Good dodge. Pro Phil right here. If this was SGDQ, that would be a standing ovation. Just a it, nice golf It might have been. It might have been. So you got to throw it at the guy. There you go. And you need to do that three times. Three times? <laughs> yeah. That was nice. Yeah, I'm done. It's good. Yeah. Uh, Conquer doesn't really hold up in my opinion, but whatever. I know some people have nostalgia for it, and it's good that it's here for those people. Um, I I just don't think it holds up compared yeah. to those other. Definitely belongs in the collection. For sure. sure. But like. I agree with you that it's weird that Reloaded's not there too, especially because that had like all of the, uh, it had like the, the online stuff yeah, too. Yeah, it had a robust, I mean this game originally actually had a very robust multiplayer mode, like tons of stuff, and that was online and Reloaded and that was pretty cool. I want to play it again just to see, because again, I haven't played this in a few years. Um, I probably will cry when I... No, look. Oh all no! Right. It's time to stop. It's right. time to stop. Goodbye, yeah. Bye. Please. You guys ready to enter the Cobra Triangle? Yeah. yeah.
race to the finish. Oh my god. Oh, and <laughs> oh my I god. Love, okay, something I guess I, I didn't know about this era of Rare is they loved vehicles with like left and right tank controls. Oh, they sure <laughs> yeah, did. That was really like did. bread and butter for a minute there. You know, this looks kind of good. For, this this for, does. For you know, 88? For 88. Yeah. Um, I, it's very vibrant. This is yeah, this is the first I've ever seen it, but it's very vibrant, colorful looking. So what I thing. like about this game <laughs> Smooth, yeah. is this yeah. is the ga type of game that, um, and I did play this as a kid, so I have some nostalgia for it for that reason, but also like it's the type of NES game that I loved you know, renting as a child sure. and figuring, like, realizing, like, sure. there's a lot going on in this game. Oh, it is not yeah. just... Because, yeah. like, so many NES games, um, especially the early, earlier NES games, were just, like, the same arcade thing over and over. Yeah. Uh, but this is actually split into levels, and the different levels actually have different objectives. Also, your boat is a helicopter. <laughs> what, you know, so that, that propeller would super help with the races, I feel like. Yeah, I think it would. That should be a button. Yeah, so here, here's this like a weird, cool. like, I've got to dispose of these mines. I've got to, wow, carry these mines over here. you, you got a Cobra Triangle. Oh, don't let him get me. This okay, guy. Clearly. You know, the, I think the one biggest piece of connective tissue between all these games, and I'm seeing a lot of these for the first time, is they, Rare seems to have always been pretty ambitious with what they do. Yeah. Like, yeah. The yeah. fact that you have separate mission objectives in this, and it's like, all the levels are, are different goals, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's, it's Really cool. Whoa. Oh. Uh, there definitely weren't a lot of other NES games at the time uh, doing stuff. Like, for almost any other publisher, this would have just been like, oh, it's like a shoot, shoot em up, but you're in a boat. Yep. It nice. would have been That's that it. first level yeah. for the rest of time. Yeah. yeah. You know? And that just got um, a little harder. Every and, time. Or yeah. maybe it's like racing, but you have guns. Right. Um, but for this, it's like each level is its own weird thing. And, the, and it pods. actually looks different too. Like it looks like you're in a swamp or a bayou here instead of you know, it's like the bonus wherever level, the first basically. one kind of took place. This actually looks cool. I I feel like I could get into this. Yeah, definitely. It looks fun. Also, if you make it far enough, we won't make it far enough in this video because I'm not good enough, and also we we're just not taking that much time. <laughs> uh, but if you make it far enough, you get to fight an actual dragon, as what? you can see in the art there. This is Fantastic. an actual sea serpent. I'm all about this. Uh, this this game looks rad. I, <laughs> I really want to play triangle. it. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 uh completely I would say largely forgotten. Yeah. Uh, people do not know about this game, but it is way better than than uh, nice work than its reputation would have you think. Did you play this back in the day at all, or? Yeah, I did. I totally rented this. You guard know, the, the local. Guard video. the people. Yeah. So look at these, these little guys! Like, oh god, guard! Oh, no. Phil! Oh, and, uh, just, they, just wait. Right. Phil, you have already lost a person. Man, oh I can my lose god. One. There look look that. There's oh. a UFO! Oh my god! Ignore the UFO! People oh are god. dying! Yeah, but that UFO shoots uh, missiles that then paralyze me, is the, this looks difficult. the issue. It no, is they're really unhappy difficult. now! They looked happy Alright, just defend these two people. That's all you gotta do, Phil. Phil, there's oh. Oh. two people left. Can you leave that grid? Yeah, I can move. Um, it just gets more complicated if oh I do. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, it, well. Oh no. I love the way they spiral back oh into no. place when you free them. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my god. Well, that person's gone. Oh, and you blew up. No, no men, men left. left. No men left. This is like the <laughs> feminist hellscape what? that I've always what feared. It? Why the last man? Here we go. Yep, basically. <laughs> All right. Cobra Vaughn presents. Why the less men in a pool? Cobra Triangle. <laughs> it's for feminists. <laughs> All right, there you go. Mount Nasty. All right, Danielle, you want to go to Mount Nasty? Mount Nasty. Sounds Don't call HR on me, please. Great. <laughs> Let's go to Mount Nasty. We're gonna go to Snowy Hill. That's okay. the that's like the beginners one. I think. All right, that sounds good. Qualifying run, okay, cool. So this is a this 19... This is a slalom. Yeah, this is a 1986 game. Yes. Uh, and very simple, simple controls, left and right, obviously, and then uh, you can press down and kind of gain speed your speed. Up. And show your butt. Yeah, I was going to say, you're your staring butt. at your skier's butt yeah. a lot more than in most games here, for sure. Yeah, oh. sure, I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Uh, you can also jump, of course, to get over these little snow mounds with ease. As with many of the very early... Uh, rare games, the 80s games, this looks fantastic for 1986. Yeah, I, I have agree. To say. Um, I actually, I dig this game quite a bit. Um, I think it, I think it's really cool. Yeah. This looks like a lot of fun. I could see myself getting in this and Cobra 
Oh boy. Oh, Oof. don't run into those. Oh, not that cobra. Uh, and your yeah. your main goal here uh, is you're just you're basically trying to hit the end of the track before your time runs out. Sure. So you can see on the top, start finish, mm -hmm. left and right. So you're not competing against these other skiers, they're just getting in your way. Yeah, they're just okay. getting in your way. Those are just things that you're trying to avoid. Nice work. Uh, that qualifying track, very easy, but in a regular track, hitting all those trees... Might have, yeah. Maybe, maybe a problem. Made your day not so great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what this reminds me of a little bit? Ski Free? Yeah! You remember Ski Free? I can totally see that. There's a lot of courses, though, which is yeah. kind of impressive. Um, so you've got three different mountains, and then each mountain has quite a few different tracks on top of that. Uh, so there's actually, a, again, for a game from, you know, the 80s... Yeah, mid-80s, yeah. There's a lot going on here. There really is. I'm trying to get through all these. I continue to be impressed by Rare's oh ambition, especially so early on. Look at... Th this actually looks challenging and fun. <laughs> Oh, How does it control? Person. This is important. Here, do you, you oh, go God. ahead and try it. Okay. I Remember, mean, you've only me. got a minute to get through oh, here. Oh, Lord. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. Not bad is the answer. No, the controls are fine, I think. Yeah. You, uh, you definitely need to be a little lighter than maybe <laughs> I am being <laughs> at the moment. Whoa, watch out for those oh, trees! Oh, Lord! Um, this is tough. I don't know this is like real skiing. I, I'm not 100% sure... If you need to get through the... I think you were supposed to go through the middle of those. Oh. But I don't know what it means when you miss it. I don't know if the game actually, like, if, punishes if the game you is, at all for that. If the game is mad at me for this. Oh, Lord. You're hitting most of them. Oh, Lord. Oh, I'm hitting most of the... Yep. Hey, you're hitting Cotton most Candy. of the Is trees. my name Cotton Candy? That's the name of this oh, track. Oh, okay, cool. We're on... Number two is Cotton Candy Hill or something like okay, that. Okay, cool. Yeah, this control's not bad. I mean, it's very simple, but uh, feels pretty good. Oh god, that's a tree. Sorry. Let's Game take, over. Let's take a look at <laughs> Mount Nasty just to see how things get in the uh, the later game. Sounds great. So you can see eight eight different races just on the one on Snowy Hill. That's yeah, impressive. The Blue Mongoose classic. Let's get out of this. Classic mongoose. Crystal Cruise, that sounds like fun too. It sounds like a Donkey Kong Country it level, does. to be it honest. It really does. Yeah. Which again, if only that was in this collection too. Not nasty. But it's alright. It does look nasty, oh, I will man. say that. Mount Nasty. Oh man. Oh boy. Oh man. Oh, this is oh, fast. I'm going fast. Oh Oof. my gosh. Oof. Whoa. <laughs> Mount Nasty. Living up to its name. Yeah. Oh. Oof. Boy. Oof. I like the little jumps. It's nice. Nice little animation there, too. Pretty cool. I like getting some air while I'm skiing. Yeah. That's how I do it in real life. Yeah, me too. I've skied twice in my life. I've never skied in my life. <laughs> so you've got me beat. Oh my gosh. That butt is kind of great. I'm not going to lie. That little butt... Uh, that you're seeing whenever you speed up. Well, I know you're pro 8-bit uh, butts. I, That's always been I a, really am. An important campaign I'm all about a nice, good 8-bit butt. It's really good stuff. Oof. Oof. These other skiers really just getting in your way, man. Yeah, so I, you nice. can see there, I was real close to the end. Didn't quite make it. Yeah. Mount Nasty, things get ramped up yeah. quite a bit. But you also get the hot dog heaven. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> in the rad run right after it. In the trees sounds like a terrifying one. Yeah, that does. Uh, <laughs> this is cool, though. I like Slalom a lot. I think yes. this is a fun little game. This looks like a great warm-up game. I like it. Danielle, this is Snake Rattle and Roll. Oh, I'm ready to rattle and roll. Look at the tongue on this guy. Look at that guy. It's pretty ridiculous. Uh, so this is a... Uh, weird game. Yeah. Um, you play one of two snakes, uh, one of which is named Rattle, mm -hmm. one of which is named Roll. Okay. Um, and your goal is to eat these little weird ball creatures, and that makes your snake longer. Okay, cool. Um, just like IRL. Yeah, that's how it works, right? I'm pretty sure. Snake biology. Eat cool rolly things. Uh-huh. Gain snake body. And mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly it. That's a fact. Yeah, that's how it works. Oh, that's a foot. Ooh. A fact and a foot. 
Oh, whoa, you go faster too. Yes. With more uh, snake body. You have some bits. momentum. Cool. Is this the... Okay, no, that's not it. One of these has like a bonus level. Let me see if I can hmm. find the right one. I was gonna say, this looks a little bit like. Uh, almost like Hungry Hungry Hippos meets. Look at this. Whoa! Goodbye. Whoa, bonus time! Whoa. So oh, that's a, is oh, like this is just like a free for all. Eat, eat stuff. Eat all. It's these. coming out of a uh, a golden machine of some sort. I don't understand <laughs> what is going on in this game <laughs> yeah. in any way. Um, like I don't understand. Like this isn't how snakes work. This isn't how the Life world works. works. Yeah, this um, is very dreamlike. I would have to say, a very dreamlike kind of game. So you want to get your snake long enough, and then go to that thing, and that's going to open the exit, which okay. leads to the next level. Fantastic, um, indeed. This, I think, the thing that really, uh, I like this game quite a bit. I think it's really fun yeah. and weird. Um, I'm a little freaked out by the isometric perspective. Sure. Um, yeah, that's always. And tough. it's something that Rare has done a lot of, as, as we've seen in these videos. Yeah. Um, but I, I've not played a ton of games with that perspective, so it's like getting used to it is is really weird. Yeah, it, it's tough. I remember actually in Super Mario RPG, believe it or not, I got sure. so frustrated I actually had to stop playing the game several times with isometric jumping. So I definitely feel you. It's it's a tough thing to get used to. Um, but it, this I, does look cool. This looks like it might be worth uh, getting used to isometric well, stuff. I have a just little to, like, key on my head. Look at that. Well, I mean, where else would you put it, right? If you're a snake. I guess that's true. You I know, your head is way. a great place to store things. Look, look at that movement. You look like you can get some good power oh. there. Oh, oh. He goes for a spin when he gets hit. I kind of like that. Maybe. So it looks like you're a snake who likes treasure, too, though. Snake? Well, well, the, the, you say that as though all snakes don't. Well, that's true. And you I know, think yeah. all snakes, in, in their own way, love treasure. All the dogs go oh, to yeah, heaven. This foot. All snakes love treasure. That foot is menacing. Yeah. And really big compared to your size. I have to say, I really what? love the uh, the scale of older games. There we go, there we go, there we go. I think I got him. And the fact that you lick the foot to kill it. Um, I need to make myself a lot bigger. You can see there's okay. the, the thing up there, but I'm not nearly yeah, big enough at yeah. this point. You gotta be able to make it And these so... things bounce, which is making it a lot harder. Oh yeah. Bouncy snake bits. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, bouncy snake bits. Yep. And you're you're on a timer too, I think. Am I? I think you are. You probably don't have infinite time. Oh, right. Most of these older up. games, you know. Yeah. I just heard the hurry up sound. It's definitely yeah. a hurry up, hurry up sound. We may not, we may not, I may not beat this level. That's okay. Uh, the biggest thing is just like this jumping up here is tough. Yeah, that's not easy. Making it work, and then you've got this really small amount of space before your snake just goes down the water. Yeah. Well, you know, for a snake jumping on waterfalls, I think you're doing okay. Oh, spinning. Thank you, I spin, think. Spins. You know? You're, you're just a snake on the waterfall. Hopefully you can eat enough right here and get through there. Yeah, see, like, they don't, Look at that. They don't Look actually at that. come here. Oh, no. It's going down in oh, here. Oh, man. Anyways, this is Snake Rattle and Roll. I actually do think it's a really cool game. Nice. Um, the isometric platforming is tough. If you yeah. haven't done it a lot as a kid, if you weren't playing these games back then and, and doing isometric platforming, I think it can be real hard, hard to get used to. Hard to get sure. used to, yeah. That makes a lot of um, sense. But if you're willing to put in the time and figure it out, I think this is a pretty cool game. Nice. I want to try it. Sorry. Oh, that's me. Oh, my God. Hi, Danielle. Hey! Welcome to uh, Battletoads Arcade. This isn't the Battletoads I remember. <laughs> it is not. Uh, this so is a brawler! <laughs> I had actually never played Battletoads Arcade until Rare, Rare Replay, um, and it's kind of good. Yeah, this this is interesting. It looks pretty cool. I love the animation. Yeah. Um, it's, it's much more like full-on uh, dark, bloody. There's like actual violence. In this one, more so than I think in the previous, in the in the NES one. Sure, sure. Um, I'm trying to get a, a sense of the controls here myself, but it, uh, it feels pretty responsive at least. So it's B is jump, your A is going to be just your hit attack. I see. Sorry. Um, and the attack is actually context sensitive, so if like if there's two enemies surrounding you, um, it'll 
it'll hurt both of them. Uh, oh, let's up. eat some nice flies. Ooh, delicious flies. Oh, and if throw that guy. If you do the attack button next to a box, your guy will actually pick it up. You're just jumping at that nice. guy, not attacking. Sorry, me. sorry, I got excited. I like there we go. Oh, that. that's a nice mallet. Of death and doom. Destruction. Um, I had a lot of people on Twitter. I was talking some about how much I was digging this game. I had a lot of people on Twitter tell me uh, that in the arcade it was kind of a quarter muncher, which yeah. you know, not shocking. Makes sense. Um, but apparently, some people were nice. not as into it because of that. Sure, sure. Which you know, whatever. I get you. I like a good brawler though, and you know, brawlers kind of like, came out of that entire tradition. And you this know? is a better, better form for it if that was your, your yeah. major problem, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Because now, uh, no quarters. Yeah, no quarters. Now Show you can no play it as much as you want. That's, that sounds pretty great. Oh my god, I've been electrocuted. Eat my foot, dude. Yeah, eat my foot. Yeah, this is cool. Um, so. It definitely has a different vibe than uh, Battle Toads, the sure. original. I certainly. Think that's fair. Uh, that was a game that was sort of all cartoonish and, and cute, almost. Uh, I don't know that I would say cute. Creepy the, cute, maybe. The thing is, like, I think yeah. the thing of it is, I think this is what, like, the the more violent, slightly more violent, like with blood and stuff, is what Battle Toads is actually all about. I see. But. For the NES version, they toned it down, I think, because of Nintendo. Well, it is called Battle Toads, not, like, cool toads who are nice to each other. Yeah. Yeah. And they're also, like, you know, like, their name is Zitz, Rash, and Pimple. Like, oh, yeah, it's not like pleasant. It's, like, gross, like... Not a pleasant sort of fellow duo, we're gonna trio, maybe get the rather. First boss oh, here. Rocksteady, how you doing? No, this is Bebop. Maybe. This is neither. <laughs> this is neither of those guys. Excuse me, that's a different. Um, uh, that's choice. a different kind of thing. You're gonna get really angry people in the comments. Did you see that? I. Oh my god, that was. If impressive. you were rushing and you you can turn into like a bulldozer. Oh, I hit the screen. Oh, sorry. Oh boy. I'm back. I'm back and better than ever. I love that you actually knocked this guy straight up off the screen. Nice. Oh, he's lost a tooth. Oh. He's bloody, too! He's got some scar tissue there. Oh. Go! Yeah, buddy! Eat my foot. Oh. I- I also- That's... Oh my god, look at that! And there's a Star Wars space battle going on in the background. Yeah, and we knocked him into it. Clearly. He got shot by a laser. Oh. See how many people I blitzed? Oh. Versus how many you trashed? Yep. Yep. We did good. Clearly, you and did I'm a little more. Carnage. I think you did a little more than I did. To be fair, there. you had no idea what you're how to control yeah, for the first slide. Yeah, correct. Um, but I think this is super cool and underappreciated. Um, nice. I think I think it's uh, you know the original Battletoads. Is still, oh, look at that! Look at this. Uh, the original Battletoads is still, of course, better known, and sure. I think for a lot of people, is going to be a little bit more of a nostalgia thing. Um, but I dig this game a lot. Oh, Rudolph! You're not looking good these days, buddy. Alright, we should move on. Alright, sounds good. Alright, Danielle. Yeah. There's some Jet Force Gemini. Oh my god. This is... Oh my god. This game... This is probably one of the less known of uh, Rare's N64 games. Yes. Certainly less less well remembered, at least. Certainly. Um, it's cool. Yeah, I, I think remember it's, it. It's weird. I remember this being a cool game. Uh, uh, I like a lot of what it's doing. The one thing I don't like, and the one thing that I'm having a lot of trouble figuring out, as you can probably tell, is uh, the way this game controls. It was a little. It's finicky. it's not great. Yeah. So here's what's really interesting. I didn't realize how much uh, Codename Steam kind of looks like this Codename until Steam. I started looking at this again. Wait, what? Yeah, Codename Steam. That's a weird... Where did that... Why? It, it just weirdly kind of has... You know, you're fighting aliens that look almost exactly the same. Are there buggy aliens in that one? Yeah. Weird. Um, And just sort of the same chunky these. aesthetic. Oh, Ewoks. Ewok guys, yeah. <laughs> nice. Um... 
I, re I remember enjoying this game. I think I rented it back in the N64 era, but this is one of the very few rare games I didn't own yeah. in that era. And this game came out the same year as Donkey Kong 64. And I feel like this is a game Weirdly. that less people played than a lot of rare games. Yeah. A lot, I think a lot of the people who played it liked it and yes. had have fond memories of it. Um, but I do think it's very much a game of its time in a lot of ways. Certainly. It, it, it looks a little rough, for sure. Um, more oh, than anything, it's, it's just sort of the textures look like that N64 oh, he died. bark. No! You know. Oh, one of, the, one of the guys died. Oh, no. Not not you, guy. Don't die. I'm supposed to rescue those guys, and I let them oh, die. Oh, my God. So. That alien, the alien is still moving. It's humping the ground in a really oh, awkward way. It's, he's dead yeah. now. Oh, hi. You're just not shooting me, huh? But okay. I remember the whole, you know, sort of friendly, cutesy Starship Troopers thing, for sure. Which is kind of the, the premise or the theme, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I liked that because I loved me some Starship Troopers when I was 13, so. Sure. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I could see you, I could see the connection you'd make, 13-year-old Daniel would make between this and Starship Troopers. Well, I suppose Troopers. I was actually 15 when this came out, but, you know, young Daniel. Baby, baby Daniel. Oh, it's a surprise, oh, buddy! Hello. Hey! I'm an ant guy, and I'm gonna die slow. Oh, Ewok! Friend. Saved him. Let's, uh. Jump over this. Nope. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it, yeah, the, um. I'll say this I would love to see a speedrun of this game. I bet that would be pretty I have, cool. I have seen speedruns yeah? of this, and it is cool. Um, and it is by people who are. So much more talented than I will ever be in my whole life. <laughs> well, at Jet Force Gemini. Yeah, well, yeah. and everything. And in life. Um, talented at life. But yeah, this is it. an interesting combination of, of, of elements, you know. Sort of it's also another very, again, very ambitious game. Yes. Um, there is a. Oh my gosh. You are going, like, there are whole planets that you're exploring. Like, you're, nice, you're going yeah. from planet to planet. It's a, it's a relatively long game. Sure. Um, so I think that's something that uh, a lot of people got a lot out of it for as well. I, I love the way the the actual character models look. Like this little dude looks. The main characters, awesome. I think, uh, yeah. look very nice. And you do. There are multiple playable characters as well. Uh, only only main character. I mean, this, this guy's available right now. But sure. you. Uh, yeah, I, as I know you, you unlock as you go, a, a lady. You, you rescue. Well, yeah, yeah you, I mean, you can see in the key art there. Um, you're rescuing other characters, sure. and then once you rescue them, they are playable. They're, they become part of the Jet Force. One continues. Oh, good. Remember continues? Oh, I remember those. I barely do at this point. I like how you just look back. Like, what, what are you doing here? Excuse you're me? not supposed to be here. This is Ant Man territory. Go away. Unfortunate. Oh. oh okay. Hi. Oh, whoa! Not friendly. This thing. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine. That was an interesting year for games, I have to say. Dreamcast Probably. came out. So oh. all the Dreamcast launch games were around. This game came out. Donkey Kong sixty four came out. A lot of interesting stuff. A lot of interesting stuff. Turn of the millennium game. A lot of interesting. Not necessarily great stuff. Yeah. I think this is this is a still a very cool game though. Yeah. It's just a you do have to. I will warn you if you're checking this out in the uh, rare replay collection. Oof. You should probably stop just running into those. <laughs> if you're checking this out in the rare replay collection, you're gonna have to get past the, the really uh, messed up controls. Sure. Sure. That that does look like a struggle. But I'm glad Rare made interesting, weird games like this, for sure. Alright, now we're back to the real jetpack. It's time for some real jetpacking. And yes, the background is different from when we played it on sure. the yeah, jetpack refueled. This game, we talked about it a little bit before, but it is just so pure. Yes. And so good. <laughs> and I played... A lot of it, actually, as part of Donkey Kong 64, because <laughs> you had to to better... get like a, a bonus thing. <laughs> yeah, and it was also probably better than Donkey Kong 64. Uh, yeah, probably. Donkey Kong 64 is a game I liked and enjoyed, but still knew it was not as good as most of the other platformers were put out at that era. So, 
Um, but yeah. Yeah, this is just like, it's such a, like, perfect old school arcade game. Yeah. And I think the thing that I really dig about it, especially compared to a lot of uh, Rare's older stuff, is... Um, I guess, I guess it is, like, it's still ambitious a little bit, but Oh, it's sure, not, this is from the early like, 80s, yeah. Yeah, it's still a little bit more focused, and the controls are just very tight in this. Yeah. In a way that a lot of the older Rare stuff, like, the controls are a little bit... A little looser, yeah. Yeah, a little little hard to uh, to nail down. Jump Man. Jump in here and fly away. And this was such a great feeling when you actually made it through a level, to yeah. actually do this, this sort of slow crawl, like, yeah, I did it, I'm an astronaut. Uh, this game is also just, I love the purity of it. Like, there are very few mechanics, but they're handled well, and they're all interesting and have enough sort of variety. Like, you're shooting things, and your shot wraps around. And get new enemy types. But, yeah, exactly. Sort of the new enemy types add a little bit of variety, and, oh god, this looks like Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy. A little <laughs> bit. <laughs> kind of great. These guys are going to mess me up. Drugs. And it's also very readable. And I think that was the only issue I had with uh, Jetpack Refueled, is that it doesn't feel... It didn't feel quite as readable. Here, it's so stark. You know exactly what you're looking at. Yeah. You know, there's nothing to kind of get in your way. Everything is an obstacle or a power-up or something you need, basically. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah, the, uh, the like, particle stuff in Jetpack Refueled, to me, doesn't add much to the game except to make it... A little bit a little tougher to parse. Yeah, certainly. Um, which, for like a really fast-paced arcade game like this, you don't necessarily want it to be yeah. visually confusing. That's, in fact, arguably one not, of the last things the that you want. the thing. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Last off. Oh. I also love the idea of, like, for some reason, I really dig that in the first level, it's like you're putting together your rocket ship first. Yeah. You have to put together the ship, and then you're getting fuel. It's pretty great. Um, another thing that I like about this compared to a lot of the old, old Rare games uh, is, you know, a lot of the games that we looked at earlier in this list, it's so difficult to... If you're just going into that those games yeah. without looking up videos online or without, uh, you know, at the time it would have been reading the manuals. Yes. Uh, it's so difficult to parse what's going on and figure out what you're supposed to do. But in this game, like, after just a few minutes of, like, just, like, messing around. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's so... It's just, like, very It just clear. makes sense, yeah. Um, it, uh, yeah, it just makes sense. Um, so this is, you know, one of the earliest games on our list. And 83, I think, this yeah. Might be, this wasn't, like, Rare's first game or something, right? It, it was really early. I'm not sure if it was the very first, but I know this is 1983. This is actually I, before my time. Even. Yeah, absolutely. Just barely, but, yeah, before um, my time. Um, but it, but it's, it's, despite being, uh, one of the earliest, it, it is still so much fun, I feel like, to go back and play this. Yeah, um, I can tell you're, like, completely enjoying yourself right now, playing this yeah, game. I don't it's like, stop. I no, wanna... let's keep playing. Oh, God. Oh! I died. Whoops. <laughs> I still got two mans, though. Two mans. Two astro mans. Two space mans. Hey, two you're... jet, jet mans. Jet man. Solar Blowing pack. <laughs> Slowly floating away. And then floating back down to the next Slowly. planet. It gives you a minute to, to think about life on these other planets. What are these what blobs? Does it mean? What are they? Oh. Whoa. 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 Get that fuel. Color palette is also fantastic. That old. This was Commodore, right? I don't uh, want to no, speak I out of turn, but. I, okay. You should look it up. I, I'm going to, in fact. Look it up right now. I super would if I had a thing Do you not have a that looks up <laughs> information on the internet. I mean, I, I possess one, but it is not handy at the moment. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Let's, yeah. <laughs> it was some British British thing. <laughs> ZX Spectrum, probably. It might have been a That's Spectrum game. Okay. A lot of their older games were ZX yeah. Spectrum games. Nice. Um, I, oh! I'm not 100% sure that this one was. Someone in the comments may be yelling at us. Yeah, they probably are. Well, I still like slowly how vibrant and cool looking. Rising towards the top, very back slowly. Back to the top, rocket man. Oh, time now, to assemble the second ship. Back to putting putting our ships together. That's right. We, we gotta, got little UFOs oh. against us. Gotta watch those UFOs are just nasty, man. Yeah, they're very. They oh. seek you out in a way that the other ones don't. Yeah. Clearly a challenging game. I, I love the little key art, too, on the sides. It's pretty nice. Key art's very nice. Oh, man. I remember this. I remember these spaceships. 
Oh, well, uh, I dig I dig uh, jetpack quite a lot. I 100% can spend most of my time in this game and be totally happy. Yeah, good game. Hi, Danielle. Have you ever seen... Have you ever even seen this part I, of Battletoads? I never got there on my own. <laughs> oh, boy. Battletoads. Uh, man, this is a late NES game. I think the SNES was already out at this point, and this was sort of that game everybody talked about because it was really hard, but it looked really cool. Yes. I think you are correct on all of that. We are in a, a rather late level in the game at this point. Yeah, um, you, you've done well to gone? get here. Is it going to come back? And Snake is... Uh, he's, he's run his course. You say I've done well to get here, but actually what I've done is a lot of this. Oh, This feature of Rare Replay that we haven't right. shown off a lot of. Uh, you can rewind the game, and that is really useful in Battletoads in particular. This game was made for this tool. <laughs> Maybe they actually made it for this game specifically and decided, hey, yeah. we made the tool, let's yeah. just put it in everything. I mean, like, a lot of the other games on this collection, it's like, I wouldn't, like, with Jetpack, it's like, I'm not going to rewind on that. Sure. Um, that's not what that game needs. Right, right. But with this game, it's like, listen, this, I need this every only tool. Makes it fair. I need every tool that I can get <laughs> to do anything Because the this. game kind of hates you. I mean, that's just sort of how it is. Here we go, back to the snake. Right, is this rattle again. or roll here? Oh, boy. Oh. oh! Good thing we got that rewind, man. Oh. <laughs> a little further back. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now, remember, he's, he's coming through that thing right there. Oh, God. Nice! You can do it, Phil! Oh. You can do it! These snake levels were of particular frustration, I remember. Um, that and any of the vehicle levels. That jet, not jetpack, sorry, the uh, motorcycle or the, the hover, jet, hover, hover jet. bike, hover, yeah, there hover we go. something or other. <laughs> uh, that one was like the the worst for me as a kid. That, that was where was... that was where I rented the game a lot as a kid, and that was where my aunt runs usually just died. Yeah, there you go. Nice work. You're doing great. You're getting rash or pimple or zit. Totally, totally through here. Man, this looks like a much more fun way of playing this game. Honestly. I don't know that it's fun. Or much more... <laughs> it, it allows you to complete it, Much maybe. less hellish, perhaps, I guess, is the, the term. God, kids talked about this on the on the playground. Remember the playground at school? Uh, no. Like, I did not go to school. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. Oh, oh man. Battletoads, everyone! And this is also a weird level, too, because it's like a platformer, but a lot of the levels in this are just, like, beat-em-up. Yes. And the beat-em-up stuff is fun, but simplistic. Um, I do actually... Oh, God. I, I will say... Oh, nice. I think generally I like... Oh, boy. Oh, man, you didn't even get it. Generally, I like... Uh, Warm-up. I, I, I like the Battletoads arcade game more. Like, I think it's a little more fun. Sure. I do yeah. think, like, the, the impact that this game has had on so many kids' lives makes yes. it, uh... And so many kids' oh, nightmares. <laughs> that, too. Makes it worth, uh, worth being a little bit higher. It's also well-designed, certainly. This this is challenging, but it, it... The game teaches you everything you need to know. It's just really difficult to execute. Oh, God. God, what a frustrating game. Oh, my oh. God. Yellow snake time. What does it want you to do right. here? I just have to keep it going. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, a lot of trial and error in this game. Trial and error was the name of this game. No, uh, actually, this is called Battle uh, Battle 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 Tits. Tits. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Cool game, though. Cool game. <laughs> God. Oh. Well, let's play a Battletoads. Yep. Let's using, do that. Just abusing this thing the whole time. Constantly. <laughs> the entire time. Yep. Oh my gosh. You can do it. I believe in you. Anyways, <laughs> I may finally beat Battletoads. <laughs> um, it's gonna be, you know, through cheating. Sure. Or what some may call cheating. Others might call just being smart. Oh, can you make that jump up there? Oh, I guess not. 
but I don't think so. Oh, oh, no. oh too much rewind. Okay, oh, but you can do it though, I believe in this. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, white snake! God. Oh my god, here we go! Oh. Nice work. Oh, are you? Lord. Oh, okay, yeah, we're done. Uh, okay. this battle toads is pretty, pretty ridiculous. It's pretty cool. It's a ridiculous game. <laughs> yeah. And it's you can maybe now beat it. <laughs> Phil, have you taken me to the Isle of Hags again? Mm-hmm. Oh. Moving on up the list, <laughs> we are now looking at Banjo Tooie. A fabulous, underrated game in the series. I believe. Um, I would I would almost argue a little bit overrated. You think so? Uh, not in the sense that I think it's a bad game by any means. Um, but I do think that, uh, I, I like Banjo-Kazooie a little bit more. Oh, sure, sure. I think Banjo-Kazooie is perhaps a better game. However, Banjo-Tooie here Still came great. out two years later. Uh, not, not too, too long later. Um, it actually does, the most interesting stuff Banjo-Tooie does is in its overworld and in how its various worlds connect with one another and influence one another. Almost, we're talking about this in the Conquer one, uh, Conquer video, but almost adventure game style. So there are several objectives in this game where you influence something in one level which causes something in another level to happen. Good example of that is in Pterodactyl Land, the dinosaur world. Sure. You can cause a waterfall to sort of come down from the cloud world. I forget what that one's called. It's it's something about... Something in the clouds. Don't something remember. Something in the clouds. Um, and a that waterfall... Classic cloud world. So a waterfall comes down from the clouds and allows, I believe, a dinosaur to drink in pterodactyl land, which causes something else to happen. So there's actually a lot of really interesting interaction. Another really cool example, there is Witchy World, which is a theme park-themed level in the game where you have to buy fries and a hamburger for cavemen in one of the earlier Can we Can we talk areas. for just a second yes. about how messed up the whole bottles thing is? It's pretty messed Bottles up. dies at the beginning bottles of the game. Bottles dies! And, it's, and, and then it's you go meet sad. his family and don't tell him. They don't, don't tell him. You don't tell the the his wife it's, or his two children. It, like, don't worry, he's not dead. He, his portrait's just on the wall. So you get instructions. So just like in Banjo-Kazooie, you get new moves as you go through the game, which is cool. It's a nice way of sort of opening up the possibility space, as they sure, say, in yeah. game design. Um, but instead of Bottles, the beloved sort of dorky um, dude, it's Jam Jars, his cousin, who's like a little military guy. Yes. Um, these games, love, em, love it or hate it, they have a lot of personality. And maybe that personality isn't what you would call, maybe you'd call it Disney Rejects, maybe you'd call it fun and, you know, wholesome. Let's put in the Mumbo Skull here. Sure. Um, so the levels are way bigger in this, and because of that, yes. they introduce these warp points. Yes. Help you get around. Uh, and one of the other things that they introduce that's new from Banjo, you do start with like all your moves from Banjo Kazooie, which yes. is pretty cool. Um, but that means that kind of like they get things really complicated because they have to add new moves on top it does. of that. Yeah. Um, but one of the ways that they make things more more complex, but maybe not in a bad way, is uh, you can play as other characters, and that's in right. particular. Um, Mumbo Jumbo. In the previous game, uh, Mumbo Jumbo would transform you into other critters, other like yeah, yeah, like animal creature things uh, at certain points. But now you can actually play as him. He's got his own little magic here that he does. That's right. And his his entire function in this game is basically to almost kind of give you adventure game style things, like interact sort of, with yeah. the world in a particular way, and that'll allow you to do something else as well. He's yeah. almost like an inventory item. In a way, that's how I like to think of this game and the way this game innovated sort of on what you would normally see in a 3D platformer. This one had a little bit more, a few more adventure, classic point and click adventure elements. At least in terms I think of you're structure. right, and I also think that's bad. Yeah, and I think, I think so? that's I think that's exactly the path that Rare was going down, and that's why stuff like Conquer and uh, Donkey Kong 64 ended up being not as good in my opinion. Well, I think I think. I don't necessarily agree with your opinion, but I do think they were going for more adventure elements in Conquer. I don't think they were necessarily doing that in Banjo, uh, sorry, Donkey Kong 64. I think Donkey Kong 64 was more of a pure collectathon, quote unquote. See, I disagree. Like yeah. Donkey Kong 64, part of the issue is like it's all these mini games and stuff. No, there's a lot of mini games, but it, it didn't kind of use the same 
Whoa, you were going way into the... <laughs> you were clipping way down there. No, that's a, that's like the swamp. Oh, okay. Um, but I you, like can't, your you can't hip enter shooting. that as... Uh, as banjo. That's right. So I'm entering it as That's this why you guy. need the magical thing. I love the kick, though. That's a powerful Get out kick. Of here. Yeah, it's a good kick. There is, um. That up. In the hot and cold, the hot, half, half lava, half ice world, which, again, it has a really cool slash ridiculous name. You actually have to. Go back to this world. Part of this world is only accessible from that world, and you have to play soccer as this guy <laughs> later on with his ridiculous kick. Uh, are you? Sh I, there is already a soccer game that I've played at this point. Yeah. But as a as actual later on you go yeah later on you go through the hot cold world and kind of have go back to the soccer thing from there. Back. There's just a lot of cool interaction in this game uh, between the worlds or among the worlds. I thought that was cool. Let me get back as. Banjo now. And actually, I'll be honest, um, as a massive Mega Banjo fan, I was disappointed when I played the first world in this game. I think the first kind of jungly world... The world we're in now. The world we're in now is the least interesting world in this entire game. I think every other stage has a lot more interesting stuff kind of going on. Sure. And a lot more personality to it. So that's one of the things about Banjo-Tooie that I found a little bizarre. Just sit down here. Yep, and now you're back to Baron Bird. Good stuff. All your moves, all your favorite Banjo Kazooie moves. Oh yeah, that Talon Trot that you can do too. Oh yeah, never. Don't want to forget that. There we go. Yeah, that's how speedrunners get through the entire game. They're they're never. They're ne <laughs> yeah, they're pretty much always <laughs> <Ever>. doing that. <laughs> this game also had a cool thing at the very beginning, um, which was supposed to be a much cooler thing, which was the stop and swap. Yeah. Uh, which in the original game, which we'll talk about, I'm sure at some point today. One day. In the original game, there were secrets you could never get to. There was an ice key, and there were sort of hidden eggs. Those elements are in this game, but they kind of just give you a power-up. They make Kazooie a dragon, <laughs> weirdly enough, if you follow them all the way through and get everything. So they... did they... because uh, I, I played... this is the XBLA re-release. Yes. That's what's included in here. Sure. I played um, Banjo-Kazooie XBLA re-release, but not... Tui, mm -hmm. um, but I heard that they were re-adding in some of the stop and swap oh, stuff. Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize but that. But I don't know if they like what that means or like sure. to what extent they did that. Sure. Well, I, I remember the original N64. They, you were supposed to take a cartridge out and put another cartridge in. That was the original idea yeah. behind it, and that ended up being really unsafe and really bad for the system and the software. So that's why they scrapped that. But that would be cool if they could actually add some of that functionality back into the game. Wait, what am I trying to figure out what I Oh yeah, and there were different types of eggs in this game. I, I really do think this game was Banjo Kazooie plus a lot of shit, and I definitely think I believe what your idea is that it that kind of watered it down a little bit. That kept it from being as pure. Yep, there, you get the grenade eggs here, I think. Jam jars, thank you, Jam I think it's the grenade eggs. I'm confused, though. You can change them. Oh, I guess you don't have them yet. He was telling you something you can't do yet, probably. No, he was just saying that I can shoot in the first person, but I don't know that that helps me a ton right now. Mm. Anyway, I love this game. I don't think it's quite as good as Banjo-Kazooie, but I, I really do like sort of the way they added in world interaction. I actually thought that was pretty cool. Oh. Oh. First person, oh, baby. That's, what that's I was... right. There was first person shooting. Oh yeah. His name is Target Tazan. That's his name. I know most of the ridiculous names of the things in so these now, games. Now we're playing Doom. Now we're playing Doom Banjo Kadumi? Mm. Mm-hmm. We gotta stop this video now. <laughs> we might have to. Okay. Yeah, so you gotta collect those, statues. and then you have a, then there's a boss fight, basically. <laughs> yeah, this is Doom. That's what they're talking about. Yep. That's Doom. That's correct. There you go. Later on, there is a level where you do first person, and you are fighting poop on the walls. And uh, it makes a poop sound when you shoot it. True fact. 
Uh, you were talking about that that's gotta be a conquer. It's no, that's definitely in this game. I believe it's called Clinker's Cavern. Not Clanker. Clinker. Or Clinker is something. Because the clinkers are the poops. True fact, I think it might be in the factory stage. Uh, Grunty Industries, which has, by the way, this game has an amazing soundtrack, but Grunty Industries, the song, uh, one of the best songs in any Banjo Kazooie game. Great song. Here we go. We're getting all this stuff that you can get, and then you kill this boss. Another cool thing about this game and Banjo-Kazooie is that the music changed depending on where you were. Yeah. And that was really cool at the time. That was not something you necessarily got. This is a long... Oh, yeah. Like, this is a fairly complicated, lengthy zone. It sure is. I guess that's, again, like we did say they... Uh, this is a much bigger game. Yep, there you go. You can go through they that. They made the, the size of the levels much bigger in general. Yeah. They sure did. And you can go back where you came from, and then you can go try to fight Target to Zan. <laughs> also, I, I, you know, it's sounding like I'm real down on this, but no. I mean, I, I like the game a lot still. Oh. How do I get that guy? I think you can shoot him. Oh. Excuse me, I'm busy right now. Stop. Can you jump in first person? Hmm. I think so. Sorry, Jinjo. I'm just gonna shoot you in your face. Probably like a secret path or something to get up to him. Oh, yeah, there is. Target design slightly sacred chamber. Oh shit! I did it. Yeah, you totally did it. But I remember there being a boss in here. Have they messed <laughs> with the formula? They felt bad. <laughs> hmm. It might be one that you unlock later. Maybe, also, maybe that's to get what it another. Is. Yeah. Uh. Because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of these uh, puzzle pieces that you gotta yes. collect Jiggies. in this game. I think they're just called puzzle pieces. <laughs> puzzlies. Puzzlies. Warm and puzzlies. Got these guys. Oh, there's more of those things. Yeah, there's more of these. So maybe we have to open up the other one. Oh, that makes sense. That's probably what it is. We should probably stop, but I, I really like playing I, banjo, it's pretty so it's, good. And it's also, hard to, like... This boss is kind of interesting. It's hard to stop, because I'm just like, oh, I could just play banjo all day instead. Yeah, I'm fine with that. We could play banjo all day. We could do a full Full banjo replay. let's play. Let's I'm, do all of it. I'm so down for that. We could we could hot seat it. Yeah, oh no, that's a good idea. That would be fun. Maybe we should do this. Maybe this is the thing we should do. Have to let us know if that's something they want to yeah, see. Yeah, seriously. I think I remember most of how to do things <laughs> in Banjo. I have 100 percented the original like five or six times. That's how much I love that yeah, game. Yeah, I have quite quite a few times as well. Maybe not five or six, maybe like twice. It's still it's a big game, it takes a while. I just had a lot more time on my hands when I was a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. So, like to be clear, I've 100 percent of the original in recent years. I actually yeah. didn't own an N64. Nice. Um, so I played some of the original out of friends, but not. Sure. Uh, I didn't play a, a lot of it until uh, later in life. Sure, sure. But I always loved platformers, so it was always like a a game that I wanted to return to at some point. Yeah, there's a there's a thing I remember. Um, some of these rare games, Banjo Kazooie in particular, but also Tui and Goldeneye and Perfect Dark, these were games that even if you weren't strictly, um, oh, watch out! <laughs> even if you weren't strictly playing them to get further in the game, I'd say at like a, a party or an event where you just had friends over, I remember uh, distinctly people just playing random levels, not even getting jiggies or anything, just being in these spaces and being like, this is really fun to just jump around and explore this little totally. world. Yeah. Um, without like explicitly, you know, quote unquote playing the game. There you go. Now it's time to fight Target to Zen. But that's how cool these games were. A really sacred chamber, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we were only in the sl That was a slightly, slightly sacred, sacred chamber. That's right. Oh, that thing come back to life. That's not cool. Yeah. Might want a little health too for you. Uh, we're probably fine. You know. We'll do okay. You'll gonna, do okay. Who's gonna stop me? I believe in you. 
the that was your first mistake of <laughs> of your Kazooie skills. Oh, that's a puma, I think. A puma guy. There it is, the really sacred chamber. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're jiggy. Oh yeah, you think it's there for your fun. Yeah, game finishing it. A little fourth wall breaking. They talk a lot okay. about what they did in the last game yeah. and refer to it as There's the last game. Plenty of that. To be fair, 16 or 15 years ago, that wasn't quite as overplayed as it is now. No, absolutely. <laughs> Target to Zan. There's Mr. Patches. I don't remember that boss in this game. The giant balloon, he had to shoot the patches. He was in Witchy World. Uh oh. Those guys do drop health, I think, if you shoot them. Moggies! That's your name? Yeah, there we go. Nice honeycomb. Bears like honey. It's so. a fact, but science. You know. Oh! Science! Bear science! Nice. You're making quick work of target to Zan. Oh, oh right behind you, man. Oh. oh! Oh! Worth it. Uh, the sound effects and entire soundtrack are amazing. Oh, almost. Oh my guy, Moggy. Gained health from this. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I like how they wait for the the henchmen there. Nice. Oh, down to the last moment. Target to Zan boss fight. I think this is the first boss fight in the game, actually. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure it is as well. Um, so it's it's fairly <laughs> Oh no! I say that as you get mauled with a bat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I lost it. Yeah, you're good. I'll probably do it. You're doing good. Oh. No. Uh oh, sacred self destruct. You know what that means? I don't. It means that. <laughs> nice work. Well, 8 out, of, 8 out of 10. I think there are 10 GGs in each level. Yeah, I believe you're correct. Um, so I'm doing all right here. You're doing Not good. so bad. Um, yeah, Banjo Tooie is still pretty awesome. I like this Hell game yeah. a lot, and I'm definitely planning to continue playing my way through it. Sounds good. Danielle. Yes. Are you ready to get some candy worms to have sex? I sure am. I'm always ready, always for, that ready for that any day, any time. That's the thing I like about you, and yeah. one of the reasons that you got the job at Polygon, you're yep. always prepared to uh, try and convince two candied worms to mate. That's right. Um, yep. Big part of the job. Big part of my job here at Polygon, yes. for sure. Uh, this is Viva Pinata, the original, oh, yeah. uh, which, gosh, I like this game quite a lot. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, except for that the uh, the garden that I had prepared got deleted by oh, accident, no. so we are back at the beginning. We're making a new garden. <laughs> which is okay, we're just starting <laughs> over, making making a fresh, fresh new home for our worms to uh, have romantic dances yes. together. Oh. There's a worm right oh, there. Oh, here we go. I don't want to hit it. Hey, buddy. Um, yeah, you don't want to squish them. They're so cute. So this game was one of the few games sort of on the original Xbox Xbox 360. Uh, oh, sorry, you're right. It was yeah. a 360 game. That's absolutely right. Sorry. Um, sort of one of the first new Rare games sure. that I really loved. Sure. You know, after the acquisition from Microsoft, there were, there were a few, you know, things that were okay. Maybe some things that were not okay, like Perfect Dark Zero. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but a lot of nothing really quite captured the magic until this came out. And yeah. this made me so happy. This, this is quirky and interesting and different. What I like about this game, too, yeah. is it's it's a game where, um, beyond this tutorial segment, <laughs> uh, you really kind of make your own goals. Yeah. And it's really chill. Like, you just, like, relax, make the garden you want to make, try and get the creatures that you want in, and it's not, like, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, like, drive you crazy with yeah. challenges. Yeah, absolutely. It's also, uh... It was also an interesting game in that it didn't sort of conform to, 
existing genres the way a lot of other rare games do. That is kind of gardening sim, kind of almost Animal Crossing-y chill yeah. game, like you're saying, you know, not that many objectives beyond sort of what you want it to be. And also, you know, not a whole lot of games about uh, candy animals mating. I mean, for sure. Not it's enough. kind of some new territory. Certainly not enough. Not enough for me. Absolutely. You know, clearly. Well, it's your, you know, it's your area of expertise. Yes, yeah, I mean, that's uh, what I got my right, degree we, in. We've got this uh, mostly looking okay yeah. here. Let's uh, put our shovel away. Take out this grass packet we were just yeah. given. And get the some gra grass growing. Look at this nice grass that you were about to <laughs> make. Oh, it's beautiful. Spreading it around like a... Aesthetically, oh look! Oh, this means Swirl now wants to live with us. That's right! Yay! Oh, it's such a happy dance. Look, so colorful. It became a resident. Oh, how nice! Oh, they want me to. Yeah, so all the animals in this game are candy because they're pinata animals, which is pretty cool. Um. Let's uh, put this away. Yeah. Let's go over and. Oh, hey, Worm. You oh, hey, right. buddy. Romance requirements. We got one out of two, at least. <laughs> so yeah, Give you can a get these. Bit of a name here. You can get these animals to mate, and they make cute baby animals for you. I'm gonna name our Worm. Good old. Yeah. Nick. Nick. Oh. Just like our, our friend, your friend and mine, Nick Robinson. Rob. He, he is a bit of a worm, you know? I think he's got the look. Yeah. It's the squirreliness, the yeah, squirminess. Yeah, the squirmy, worm kind of, kind of thing going yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. Look at Nick Robinson. He's so happy. Oh, hey, Willie. How's it going, dude? Yeah? All right. This guy is going to build us buildings. Nice. Oh, there we got a serpent. Oh, excellent. Well. Look at how cute. Oh, we've got a lot of snakes going on. Name him Rattle or Roll, I think, would be appropriate. Sure, that yeah. would be good. That would be a good one. You are doing very yeah, well. I know oh. I'm doing well. Thank oh, you. Oh, look, a sparrow mint. That sounds delicious. I'm doing very well. Look at this. Oh, how nice. What a beautiful little garden you got going. Yeah, I loved this game so much. I actually played this the first uh there we go. The first I played of it was actually the 3DS version or the DS version, whichever it happened on first. And then I played the original later on. Oh yeah, lots of lots of stuff going right. on. Oh look at little um, friends! We'll wait for that to get built because our builder takes his time. Let's maybe yeah. pour a little bit more cold grass in here. Oh, this is beautiful. Uh, so eventually, as you as you go through this game, you're going to be able to have a lot more control over your garden, plant yeah. specific flowers and uh, things that attract certain animals. Put in yeah, put in water and. You're going to have, all, a lot of the animals are going to have certain requirements of like, oh, have this percentage of grass, or mm -hmm. this percentage of et cetera, et cetera. And if you're really good, eventually you're going to get a tunicorn. That's, oh, real, that's really right. the goal. Really the goal in my mind is to get that tunicorn. Oh, yeah. Um, I actually have 100% of the achievements on this game. Nice! In case you were wondering how I was. much time I spent with it. Um, so I love this not, game. Probably not all mine. There's probably some of those where like a significant other sure, was playing sure. as well. That is, this is a great game to play with a significant Absolutely other. Actually, it is. yeah, it, it's like um, not only is it non-competitive, but it's about building a cool thing. Which yeah. those games are always kind of nice to play with somebody. Uh, hey, Sparrow Mint, don't you want to be a resident here? Good, are we ready? Look at that. That's nice. Lots of patches on it. We're ready. <laughs> yeah. Smash building site. <laughs> we did it! Yay! Now that you've provided the world oh. with everything they need, the heart They might be ready for romance. Ready. Are you ready for world romance? Oh, <gasps> They're both ready for romance. Oh. 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 Now that you have the cursor on a world. Oh my god, we might see some magic! Now the cursor was... We might see some magical... Oh my god. They almost saw each other. 
<gasps> All right, now this is, uh, if you're... Uh, Not safe for work. If you're under the age of 18, you can't watch this. This FYI. is... This is... Please turn away Something now. you can't see. Oh, oh goodness. Yeah, they definitely give you... Romancing minigame. What is this, hot coffee? Oh. Come and get me. Okay. God, this is so cute. This game is so adorable. And although, when you think about it, this is the game's depiction of sex. We've all been there. Yeah. You know, this is pretty much how it works, I think. They'll go to the house and do a romance dance. Okay, now this is really what we all came here for. Yeah. This is arguably the best part Oh of my the god. Game. That one is really excited to get into the house sure. and romance dance. Sure. Yep. They Again, I mean, they both are. There. We've all been there. It's true. Oh. oh no, no. No, do I, uh, don't you want to go in? There we go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. The romance dance. Here we go. <laughs> this, is, this is sexy. Sex is complicated. It really is. This is pretty great. I, are there young children out there who actually think this is how babies are made? It's what I think. Well, what are you trying to... I mean, to... it's true. Oh, here. The Storkos is here. Hi. Oh, she almost <laughs> fell and broke her Storkos neck. That would have been bad. Here she comes. Your pinatas have made an... Oh. Yeah, and then so as you, again, as you go, you can get more complex. Uh, the higher ranking creatures are going to require more things in order to make them want to mate. Yes, certainly. Um, the experiment's maybe becoming a resonant now. I think so too. Uh, oh, he was going to And run then there's off. also like special like breeding things you can do where you can breed like in a certain special, way to create yeah. like special versions of these uh, these creatures, um, which is all pretty cool. Oh, it's I so think. awesome. They're in love. They're, They're so, so in love. love. Aww. Aww. And I am also in love with Viva Pinata. It's a good video game. Such a great game. If you've never checked this out before, now is a very good chance to do so. Yeah. I think it's very uh, worth it. It's a cute, awesome game about nice things. About growing things. Love. Smashing this egg! And hitting houses with shovels. <laughs> oh, good. Every time a new good job. Well... That happened. Thanks, Nick Robinson. Thank you, Nick Robinson. I hope you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> and y'all, do you remember RC Pro Am? Of course you do. I do actually. Um, Vaguely. This is classic. <laughs> but, classic uh, racing game. I yeah, it's pretty awesome looking, and it looks like it actually holds up pretty well too. Yeah, I actually still find RC Pro Am to be very fun. Um, it's difficult. Sure. Uh, As you can see. <laughs> It's been a long time since I've played it, and one of the things that's weird about this game, so you're seeing I'm, I'm picking up, like, tires and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you upgrade your vehicle in this game as you're, as you're racing. Oh, that's right! Just by picking up the items on the road. That's actually is, a cool mechanic. It's a, it, it is cool, and, but also weird, and it also makes it that, like, as you progress through the races, if you haven't been picking up enough stuff, mm. it actually becomes, like, progressively worse for you. That's right, that's right. Um... But I do like their. I, I do like that there is a an upgrade mechanic in the game. Yeah, that's pretty um, That's awesome. one of the things that I've always enjoyed about RC Program, and, and one of the things that I like about this game in particular. Make your car better. Uh, you can see you're also you also can collect these letters. Um, I believe in the original game you actually spelled out Nintendo. Oh uh, right. But now you are spelling out Champion. Oh, that's well, that's something. <laughs> um. It almost seems to me like that whole picking things up while racing mechanic was picked up again in Diddy Kong Racing. Sure. I think that's true to some degree. Hmm. Uh, uh, cool, though. It, this looks like it's still it's fun. Game over screen. Well, Classic. not the game over screen, but the game itself looks like it's still fun. Absolutely. I think it's still fantastic. Look at that. Sticky tires. You gotta have sticky tires. Yeah, that's, that's just, right. Uh, that's just Whoa! Oh. Whoa! Nice. I also like that as long as you get in third, you're doing okay. Yes. I like that <laughs> Even as well. though there's only four cars. 
Well, it's, it, yeah, it's not well, always enough for me. Yep. Not always, yeah. You know. It's weird, too, because, like, uh, like so much ra uh, rare stuff. Yeah. Uh, this is a racing game that doesn't control, like, any other racing game. Sure, yeah. Uh, and, and that can make it really confusing and difficult sometimes. Totally. Um, but I still really like it and appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, this is an older game as well. This is 80s, I believe. Early rare. But still showing rare being ambitious and doing things that were not in games at that time, commonly. Sure. Like I having the extra mechanic and, you know, collecting things. Shoot upgrading missiles your at car, your cars. You know, things like that. It also looks good. This looks sharp and colorful and kind of cool. Yeah, I think this is a very uh, a good port, I guess I would say. Nice. Um, so I recommend it. I'm definitely going to be playing a lot more of it. Nice. Danielle, tell me about Perfect Dark. It was an awesome game in the year 2000. A very ambitious first-person shooter set in the future and starring Joanna Dark as a special agent. Uh, this was Rare's follow-up to Goldeneye, actually. Yeah, building off of what they did yeah. with Goldeneye, uh, in my opinion, uh, doing much better yeah. than, than mm -hmm. what they do. I know Goldeneye gets a lot of love and I, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, but I think this is doing a lot of the same things better. Yeah, this this game actually made you feel as if you were a spy. The sort of objectives that you have, the emphasis on stealth, um, and also just sort of the, the goofy futuristic world kind of made you feel, I don't know, at least for me, it totally worked. And, you know, I was like 16 when this game came out, so... Um, I always but it that, looks great, I was going to say, uh, in the sort of revitalized version of it here. Yeah, I mean, this is the Xbox 360 re-release. Um, I've always had a weird relationship with Rare's uh, N64 shooters, mm -hmm. just because um, I had a lot of friends with N64s um, who were really into Goldeneye and really into Perfect Dark. I was playing shooters on the PC. Oh, yeah. So I was kind you of were... like, oh... It, you guys seen Half Life? You like your baby game? Yeah. It's so much better than this. What are you even doing playing this? Yeah. Uh, but over time, I've come to appreciate these a little bit more. Um, yeah. Where even if it's like, even if I have my personal preference, I can understand what it was that people got out of these. Yeah, certainly. Some of, can interact with, right? Some of them, I, maybe. Uh, or maybe they added that in. So I had the experience where. Uh, Goldeneye and Perfect Dark were kind of my first two shooters. You know, I was a console kid all the way. Uh, pretty much a Nintendo kid all the way. My first non-Nintendo console that I owned was a Dreamcast. So, I completely was... It's so bright. Oh, it's, it's a bright game, but I'm sure I you the, can... I might have the gamma up, also. Maybe. Yeah, I do. Let's that was... make that, let's make that a little dark. Let's, let's make oh, it a little... There, there we go. That's actually my bad. Uh, when I was playing earlier, I turned the lights out in an area oh, and no. could not see anything. I oh, was man. like, what am I doing? And then I turned the gamma up all the way to see if that would work, and it didn't. But, uh, I, I, I see. don't use that. Just don't turn the lights don't out. Don't mess with your lights in these games. Yeah. Uh, this game, what I thought was coolest about this game was the mission design and level design was fantastic, I thought. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of things you do. So you're basically a futuristic spy in this, you know, very sort of cyberpunk but even cheesier kind of world. You work for this car uh, corporation, uh, well, you work for Carrington, Daniel Carrington, he's a yes. rich guy who has a you know, fleet of super spies. Right now you're in Datadyne, and you are sort of infiltrating Datadyne, you're trying to figure out what's going on. I know there's some big shooting inciting incident, you're, you're shooting a lot of guards. Uh, but the actual architecture of the levels, I think, is very interesting. You were doing a lot of cool things. Uh, later on in the game, you actually get a spy camera that you have to fly through the levels, which was really cool and totally unique at the yes. time. Yes. Uh, and we saw that in the Perfect Dark Zero clip at, oh, you know, yes. at the, earlier in this list. Sure. We saw the spy camera very briefly at the end, uh, but, you know, in a yeah. much worse context because the game's not Yeah, good. here is actually like, a really cool thing. It was a very interesting thing. This also had great weapon design. Um, there were some crappy guns in Goldeneye, like the Clob, who, you know, when you killed somebody with the Clob in multiplayer, it was almost like an achievement. Like, you, you killed someone with the poopiest gun, basically. Um, but there were a lot of, like, cool weapons in this game. There was a laptop sentry gun that you could actually sort of deploy. That was pretty cool. 
Um, as, as sort of uh, an N64 kid, I played a ton of multiplayer, GoldenEye and this. Sure. But I also played the living crap out of the single player game as well. Um, you know, I had my friends over for game parties or whatever all the time, but not not so often that I didn't also want to play these games. And, you know, when you're a kid, you play every hour of every yeah, game that you, you play, have, for you, sure. You play the <laughs> hell out of whatever games you have. Yeah, and I got a lot out of this. There's also a lot of interesting modes. There's a shooting range in this game that you can get, like, ranked on. You can get yeah. bonuses, stuff like that. There are There's, like, combat simulator. Yeah. There's and, and, you know, the thing that obviously a lot of people talk about with uh, with GoldenEye that they uh, sometimes I feel like it's forget forgotten a little bit with Perfect Dark is the uh, the multiplayer. Yes, There's oh my a, god. a incredibly uh, robust multiplayer with so many options. Oh my god, it was um, incredible. So there was just a lot to like. You could play a lot of different modes and have a lot of different like modifiers, and essentially never really uh, run out of cool new ways to play the game with your friends. This is the first game I've played where you could have bots in multiplayer and actually sure. sort of yeah. play team versus team even if there are only two humans, which was amazing to me. I thought that was the coolest thing. I'm very lost right now. Oh, you need to go down the elevator, I think. Well, I need to go down. I think, yeah. Go in there. Let's see where it goes. Yeah, it'll... Or do you need... Um... Or does the other one go down? Oh, I think try, try the other one. Yeah. Oh, no! Oh, so you gotta go up one and then <laughs> go down, maybe? There you go. Elevator way fun time. Elevator fun times. Elevator antics. Here we go. I used okay. to like oh what what's going on, man? That elevator's being goofy. Goofy elevator. There is a really cool series on YouTube I wanna uh, shout out to um Falrender on Twitter, uh, who actually has a, a YouTube channel, Feng. XII, who does a Let's Crit series of Perfect Dark that is fantastic if you're interested in sort of the architecture and mission design sure. of this game. Really, really, really cool series. There we go. I think this will bring you where you need to go. Yeah, there's a lot of levels, even though that you can't, you can only play on like three of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Actually. And then you have to, uh, you have to find Cassandra of Datadyne, the CEO of Datadyne. She has a computer, she has a bunch of weird stuff going on. The guards are a little harder down here, they have helmets. Yeah, I'm noticing that. That's awful. Um, yeah. Really cool game. I actually really love, there are also some outdoor levels in this game. Sure. It's such an ambitious game, especially for N64 hardware in the year 2000 is not you know, they weren't working with the, the greatest things that you could work with, basically, but they really did some cool things with mission and level design, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I certainly agree with that. And it, again, it's something that, like, as a as a teenager, I kind of turned my nose up at it a little bit, but sure. the more that I saw my friends playing it, um, the more that I played it, and, and certainly just as I've grown up a little bit, uh, I've come to appreciate this game a lot more even if it is not, uh, even if it's not my personal, like, if I'm gonna play a shooter, I'm probably gonna play, not play this. Sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> or not play a N64 based shooter, Totally, let's say. yeah. Um, but I still appreciate it. Yeah, These doors are locked. This is a cool game. These doors are all locked. Yeah, I think it's a key card or something, but yeah, it's that room there with the golden door. What are you doing? One of these or both of these? Yes, you did it. <laughs> Perfect dog! I just like, I like dual wielding these guns. Yeah, it's I like just great. going in every gun blazing. There we go. Objective one complete. Joanna Dark. All right, Daniel. Yes. This is RC Pro Am 2. Ooh. And the biggest change, the thing that I think puts this just above the original for me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, instead of just picking up upgrades on the track, you're actually picking up money, and then Ooh. between levels, you're able to go and buy upgrades. So in this case, I've got the solo standard motor. I'm going to up upgrade to the red motor. Excellent. And suddenly. You're going to be a faster little RC car now. Yeah, exactly. 
that's a pretty great idea, and it seems like a pretty revolutionary thing for the time. <laughs> Um, again, I think this is still in the 80s here. Yeah, it's uh, it's really, you know, like, if you look at the game, it's it's still uh, very much the same style as the original. Sure. But it is just building off of that what that, that game did tweak. so well. Yeah. Uh, and making it even better. That's pretty great. Um, so it's... I, I really like RC Pro-Man 2, and as a kid, spent a lot of time playing this game upgrading my car, figuring out these tracks, like, memorizing them. Yeah. So that I would not go into fourth like that. <laughs> oh, no. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's a game that I spent a lot of time with as a kid, and that, um, like like with the original RC Prime, I think really shockingly holds up very well now. Sure. Like, it looks great still. For as bizarre as these weird, like, sort of tank controls are. Sure, um, sure. They, they really work in a way that you, you kind of nice. might not expect. Photo finish right there, too. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah, that's a, it seems like a cool tweak to a, a good formula, and again, it looks really sharp still. So I'm up in first here, Look 26 points across all the races I've done. Aww. Um, a lot of tracks in this game, I remember that. And just a lot of upgrades to get, like a lot of, you can buy different tires. Skinny tires. Let's get the skinny tires. Yeah, this Let's will be it. nice. Do you get to choose what color your car is? You know, I'm sure that there's got to be a way to pick that, right? Sure. You'd yeah. think. Maybe I'm just thinking from modern perspective, it seems like there would be, but... Sure, sure. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how to do that, or I haven't, I haven't spent enough time looking into if you can do that, I guess. Sure. But why would you want to be anything other than the right car? I mean, you know. I'd actually prefer green, but... <laughs> what do they know? My oh, God! Oh, no! Did an airplane dropping bombs oh, on me? Oh no! That airplane hates you! It hates you so much! Why? What did, what did I do to deserve that? I'm constantly impressed by older games and how well they... So this is a simple thing, but you know, you're always... The camera's following you really well here, right? Sure. And like, camera stuff for old games. <laughs> Probably wasn't the easiest thing to get right. Yeah, I so can I'm imagine. like I can. I'm always impressed. There's certainly a lot of old things, games that know? didn't get it right. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, still number one. I'm. Yeah, I dig RC Pro too. I mean, there's not much more to show of it than sure, that. Like sure. it's it's the same game essentially, but better. Yeah. They took the stuff that worked. They added some more stuff that's even better, and they uh, they tweaked it from there. And I I think it's uh, it is an excellent improvement, and uh, certainly deserves a spot high up on our list where it is. Absolutely. Well deserved, RC Pro-Am 2. This is one of my favorite <laughs> fake-outs in the history of video games, by the way. This one right yeah. here? Uh, so, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Um, Yes. This is the fun little intro. Um, I actually kind of wanted to show off the intro because I do like the fake out that it's they do. It's pretty cruel. It's, a, it's kind of a big middle finger to fans of the original game. Look at that. They're like, hey, look at. Remember these games you love? Remember how like how much fun you had collecting jiggies and puzzle pieces? It was great, right? That's that's the it premise. It was very fun. It was fun. Yeah. Luckily, all these games are on the collection. Yes, we can play all of them now. All of them again. Yes, I mean, we've already seen Banjo-Tooie, and we will see uh, Banjo-Kazooie as well at some point in this list. Uh, Nuts and Bolts, in my opinion, falls right in between those two. Mm. Better than Banjo-Tooie. Uh, not, again, in my opinion, right, right. not as good as Banjo-Kazooie. I can see, here's the thing. This game, which I think is an incredible game, and one of my favorite 360 games ever, is pretty much the Metal Gear Solid 2 of the Banjo series, right? <laughs> like, it's... People have been people have been begging at this point for, like, almost a decade for them to bring back Banjo-Kazooie, and then they do it, and they have this whole setup that's like a beautiful remake of the first area from Banjo-Kazooie with the house, and the characters look great in HD, and it's like, you're there again, right? Um, but Gruntilda's been defeated. Yeah. I kind of loved this. To yeah. be honest, I thought it was clever in a way that most 3D character yeah, I mean, were not <laughs> necessarily clever. But And I mean, it's worth mentioning, you, you call it a middle finger to fans, but I, I do think it was... 
I think from Rare's perspective, it probably wasn't meant as a, like, fuck you so much. Oh, of course like, not, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is goofy fun. For sure, for sure. And I, I love this game. Like, it's, I think this is more fun to play than Banjo-Kazooie or Tui, and I, I have That's a lot not of, true. I have a lot of nostalgia for those games, but it's more interesting and better. But... That's false. I also, I also understand and sympathize with players who... Thought, I mean, there's a game that said Banjo-Kazooie on the box. It opens with you running around as Banjo jumping and platforming, and there's enemies, and it looks like the, the old games did. Um, with the same exact sound effect. Yes, That's exactly. what I, I do love that. Boop, 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 and... It's really good. It's really good it, stuff. Great, great sound design, Thank for sure. Yeah. And great imitations of it from you. Oh, I'm so flattered. And of course, Grunty. The nicest thing anyone's ever said to Daniel. It is like, actually that's... that made my life. It's that's just my day. This intro is the equivalent of like if Nintendo put out a game that was like a perfect, beautiful remake of the castle from Super Mario 64 for the first three minutes, and then it just was like, actually, it's a typing tutor. Like it's it's feels so. <laughs> there are people who feel betrayed by this, and I totally get it. Even if I love this game, sure. Oh. This character is great, though. Oh. Another thing I remember about this coming out in 2008 or so, not everybody had an HD TV, and oh, you're playing right. this on an SD TV, the text was so tiny that mm -hmm. nobody could actually read it, and that was like a big thing. That was for a thing. It was they wound up. Funny. Did they patch it eventually or I think something? They did, yeah. Bigger text or something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kind of, I don't remember the frame rate being quite this bad, and it's hard to tell if that's a, a function of the 360 emulation, which is on the Xbox One so far has been sometimes good and sometimes not so good, or if it was actually just this janky at the time. I mean, it's a cutscene, so who cares as long as the game plays smoothly? But I think it might be that it was actually this janky, and you just your memory of it is. It could different. be. It could be. Frame rate was a different thing back then. Man. Yeah, yeah you know, standards. seven years ago. <laughs> I think this game still looks good. Yeah, I do too. It's pretty, it's vibrant, again, does the whole rare aesthetic thing. <laughs> it does so really nicely. It's no real Banjo-Kazooie game. Oh. Let's be clear about that. Yeah, you're right, and we should thank God that it isn't. What? <laughs> the Banjo-Kazooie games are all great. Every one of them. Danielle is on, Every one on of nobody's them. side. You're a team, <laughs> they're all good. I'm team, they're all good. I, I mean, I honestly think I, I probably, in reality, <laughs> when I'm not trying to get Phil's goat, I oh. would agree that they're all they're all pretty fun. But in this their one, own way. There are moments of tedium in Banjo-Kazooie, and this has its own, but they're it's for different reasons. And sure. like, I have a real soft spot for physics games, and mm -hmm. this is such a physics game. Yeah. See, I'm in, I'm in the exact opposite of like, I the physics stuff is, is what... Right doesn't trigger. get me quite as much. I think you hold right together. Yeah. Oh my god, remember this game. I do. Oh. God, this frame rate though. Oh. Mm. Yikes. Hey, it's bottles. Look. <laughs> you're not ready. He's alive again. Bottles. Phil, you're terrorizing all the, mem the, the, the civilians. Get this guy out of the way. Oh no! I just almost forgot it. Don't worry about it. Yep. I am never driving with you, Phil. Something that Ever. I that's really Ever. good about this game too is um, when you would drive the way Phil is driving right now, you would like frequently if you had a sort of complicated vehicle, parts of your vehicle would actually break yeah. off. Yeah, <laughs> just fall apart yeah. as you went. It was great. Yeah, see, it's just like Spiral Mountain in the original game, yep. kind of. Oh. 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 Don't oh. worry about it. I'm good. We're oh good. My God. I got this. You guys, I got this. Don't worry. <laughs> Seafaring vehicle here. <laughs> I mean, you can do that, right? You can make oh, yeah, stuff can that make goes boats, in the water, planes, you can make stuff that goes in the planes, air, you can do all three. Like an amphibious vehicle? Yeah. You're, still, like, you're still collecting. There's still things I'm collecting. Just like Banjo could in Diddy Kong Racing. Sadly, not a game on this collection. Yeah, that's a little... That's, that's a little the one sad. I'm probably the most sad about. That and the DKC games. Those were amazing. Right. So. Mostly just Donkey Kong 64, though. Mm. I don't hate that game, man. I don't hate Donkey Kong. I don't hate it, it's just not of the same quality. I would really love to read a book that talks about how Rare made the greatest 3D platformers ever, mm -hmm. and then also Donkey Kong 64 in the middle of all of them. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I like it! Hold don't on. get me wrong, I still enjoyed so it. You can... I do love the the uh, the patchwork look yeah, of it's the pretty great. Uh, levels. I think that's a cool style. 
So in the fiction of this game, r remind me, why is it that everything looks constructed again? I this don't... is like a fake world yeah, it's in, in Banjo's world. It's in it's in lo the Lord of Games' head. Oh, okay. We're right. in the Matrix right now. Right. Did I kill him? Hold on. Wait, nope. Saving content. Oh, that's Klungo. All right, Klungo. He got real mad at the in Banjo Tooie. Now he's wearing. He's a good guy now. Yeah, now he's wearing a little flannel jacket. And... Didn't he have like this little playable platformer in this game too? That like a weird two D so, thing yeah. with an achievement tied to it. I think you're right. Big fire down on farm. Nuts oh, burn easy. Nuts burn easy. I love those yaks. Oh. Kipper breath. What? He, all right, so because this is Log's choice, that means I have to use the, the main vehicle. I don't even get to customize it. This game takes a second to get going. Hmm. Here we go. Here we go. I'm not afraid of the water. Here we go, Banjo. I line it up just right. Oh, perfect. You're, you're doing good. Pro level. You must have played this game before. I have. You can tell from my driving skill. Driving skills. skill right here. Let me in. Whoa! Stop that fire. Hey, Mumbo, you caught your farm on fire. Oh, Mumbo. You cool, cool, cool. <laughs> So Klungo's gonna give me a reward, and then maybe, hopefully, I can get some more. What's this Jiggy doing? What are you doing, buddy? Uh, oh, Jinjo! Player's choice. Remember the evil Jinjos in Banjo Tooie? Those were just mean. That's spoilers. Just trolling, trolling. Alrighty, so this is a race. He wants me to try to hit a certain speed on my speedometer, so I'm going to build a vehicle with that in mind. Sure. All right, so workshop. Building for speed here. Let's see here. Oh gosh. I don't need... Layer up is the trigger. Alright, this is all coming back to me. Oh, yeah. Uh, delete that. We are going for speed here. So we just need a light cubic body. Mm-hmm. What do you think of this so far? Oh. This is beautiful. You like speed. Yes. Uh, I could probably use some engines or something. Is that a thing? Power, Power. I think, yeah. Oh, we've used all our engines already. It's right there. Yeah, it's right there. I see. Hmm. How about wheels? Mm. Okay, see, this is this kind of resembles what we had before. I'm gonna try to slim this thing down if I can. Uh, you gotta be able to. You might not need those on the... Yeah. Let's see here. I'm going to layer down. Ooh. Getting I'm technical here. Check this out. I'm gonna use... This might not be a great idea. Whoa. I'm using the engine and the fuel tank nice. as the vehicle on my vehicle. That seems like it couldn't go wrong. Right. This, this is pretty great. This is a pretty great idea. Min-maxing here. It's all wheels and power. This looks like my kind of car. It looks like a speed demon. And we're gonna put Banjo... Actually, I think he's probably needed as a counterweight, but let's... <laughs> Let's try it out. There's a button to test it, right? Yeah, there's that little treadmill there, yeah. Testo track. Oh, I remember the testo track being yeah. really fun because you can kind of like. Yeah, look at this thing. This thing oh, rules. Oh, speed demon! And now you're playing Rocket League. Yep, yep basically. I'm right. doing a sweet Whoa. wheelie. Rare <laughs> thought of everything. Alright, let's try this bad boy out. Is that fast? It's so fast, you don't even know. <laughs> it doesn't seem that fast. <laughs> Was your, was your trash truck, was your grab by the ghoulies powered trash truck fast? Yes. I'm gonna go down a hill. See? Let's... Look at that. Here I go. Whoa, look at that speed! I did it! Mm. Or, or <laughs> I ran over him, I don't know. Yeah, look at that! Wow, you did it! Wow, oh, alright. Done. That was it. Uh, this game's still rad, though. Yeah, oh, hell yeah. I love it. Even, I... even if you're wrong about uh, it being better than Banjo. <laughs>
I just I just remember in college trying to play through the Xbox 360 port of Banjo Kazooie and finding it. I just had a lot of my my rose tinted glasses were shattered. I think I've been yeah. play I've been playing through it this week and still loving it. Yeah, it's I think it holds up in a way that a lot of the other old stuff does not. That is good to hear. I'll give it another shot. But I think this holds up as well. Um, hopefully the frame rate stuff is not. Uh, not I guess we'll yeah, see man. what the deal is. Like you said, maybe they're gonna patch it. Maybe it's. Maybe it's actually just how the game ran, and we don't remember it's it. It's bumming yeah. me out. Like it's, this is the whole reason this collection is exciting for me, and it's running at, like, 15, like, Chop yeah. City here. That's well, I was, Silky smooth. Perfect Dark uh, had a little bit of an issue with that, too. I'm wondering how this yeah. collection looks with that as well. <sighs> we'll see. There goes the tree. Goodbye, tree. You're dead now. You know, Blast Four is the coolest fucking game. It's so good. Oh my gosh. It's so good. So this is Blast Four. Um, I'm actually in an old level here, so you can see a lot of stuff's already destroyed. <laughs> but there's still plenty to to mess up. This is a randozer. <laughs> this is a game that is just about driving around and blowing up buildings. Oh, Why so do we not have more games like this one? I don't know. And there's just such a joyful chaos to this game. Like, oh my god. You run over the people, you people mess are. everything up. Uh, and it's also a game where as you go, there are like a zillion different vehicles that you can get. Yeah. Um, I, think, I feel like there's a way to take this. Oh, there it is. Did I do it? I think you... No? Yes? Did you do I just, it? I just you did something. the level. You did something. <laughs> Rookie Wrecker. <laughs> Sounds like a name in a bad movie. Um... This game and a little game called, um, never mind. <laughs> Wait, what? I can't think of the name of the game, but it, it was great. That's not useful. I know. Not useful information. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was a DMA design game. Kind of open world. Are you Body Harvest? Yes. This game and Body Harvest, for me, were kind of my favorites. Blow things up mess things up in an almost open world kind of sense. This one's not so open. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not true open world, neither was Body Harvest, but they kind of felt like precursors to me, almost, to some op more open world things, and also, I don't know. This game was just fun to mess stuff up. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I also like just the variety of, of different vehicles that you can get. Um, so let's go let's drive this one around. Yeah, that's the other thing about Body Harvest. You could drive I hope this works. dozens and dozens of different vehicles around in it. Although, it, certainly the objectives were different, but... Man, oh man, it was fun to just mess stuff up. And to go in here. Yeah! Screw you, house! Pick something else! I love her, she's so helpful. There's like a better vehicle around that we can like go into. Something with bombs. If we can like find bombs and drag them over here. Or something. Nice! There we go. Oh, there we go, that's what Nice I'm to work! Do. Yeah, swerve into things with a buddy or car and just boom. That was a little bit of a soft touch there. there yeah! We go. Oh, that blur effect. Oh, it's so good! I love it. Nice! This is kind of a unique rare game. I don't think they ever made anything quite like this before and or since. The thing that bums me out too is like, how rad would a game with the same concept be now? Oh, that's so good. Like, it's a concept that would only be improved by technology. Oh, totally. By modern, modern tech, modern Destroy engines. Destroy everything, yeah. Yeah, like destruction tech, like this in like Crytek engine or oh something. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Make that, developers. Somebody make that, please. <laughs> I'll kickstart that. Somebody please make this game. This amazing game. Again. <laughs> where's, where's the rest of this book? Is it on there's, still, there's still a little bit of that house, I think. Yeah, there you go. Boom! Go buy house! I don't know why I said that with an accent. I just, yeah, I'm not even sure what that felt, accent is. I don't was know what also. that accent is. I, it's just a blast. The way that your car. It's a blast core The way that this car turns is like so. It's amazing. Look at that. Look at this. It's just like... It's fun to just do 
like, it's like a Tokyo maneuvers. Drift situation yeah. here. Almost done. Almost. Boom. Congratulations, you did it. You're just trying to impress me. I am. You're just trying to impress me, says the tiny little woman in the corner. Of the I am. She. She is not wrong. <laughs> Also, if I remember right, um, obviously I haven't unlocked a ton of new but I think there's quite a lot of levels in this game. Oh, yeah, there sure are. It's almost uh, like an entire world of game. Like, you can go across the entire globe, I think, in, in the game. So I have a robot suit also. Show us what you FYI. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you know. With rollerblades, it looks like. No, maybe those aren't rollerblades? I don't know, they're cool shoes. Oh, this is so weird. Oh, this game is the best. Oh, it's so good! You ground pound it, like a Mario. Oh, I love these levels the most. You're like a real jerk Mario. Yeah, game. rocket powered butt stomp Mario. It's really good. That was the one they were gonna make instead of Mario Sunshine. Yeah, that's it right. Didn't, uh... It didn't really, you know, it didn't really get out of the meeting stage. Yeah, sadly. Unfortunate. But, you know, it should have because it would have been great. Yeah. Goodbye, building. You're no good to me. It kind of has the, the same sort of joyful, destructive sense of, of building a tower with blocks and pretending to be a monster and Absolutely. Destroying. You know what? You're totally right. Um, and I just want more of this. Yeah. I want someone else to do Joyful this. destruction games. <laughs> Happy destruction, you know? Like... Get rid of it. And it's just something too where I, I think like part of what impresses me about this too is there's so many like you compare it to something like Jet Force Gemini which came out around the same time. Sure. Yeah. You know, in on the in X N64 as well, and the controls are so awkward in that game. Yeah. Whereas in this, you have. Uh, oh my God! Uh, Sideswipe time! Yeah. Feel like the controls feel really smooth despite. The large number of vehicles. Totally. Oh, it's great. One minute, can you do it? I think you gotta use your sideswipe there. Boom. I'm unclear how to. How to sideswipe? I'm sure one of those buttons does it. There you go. <laughs> You're like, why don't I just go for a swim? I want to go for a swim. Tell me I'm a. You know, agent of destruction. I just really want to be Michael Phelps. That's his dream. Yeah, that's is what this truck's dream is. You know. Why are you denying his dream, Phil? He wants to be the first explosive truck in the Olympics. You did it. Mission complete. This game's so bad. I just like I could play this all day. Um, I could sing its praises all day, but Bless very underappreciated. Boy. If you have never checked out Blast Core before, um, Rare Replay is such a great opportunity to do that. Um, I strongly, strongly recommend checking it out. Oh my god, yes. Oh! Oh, oh. oh. oh no. Oops. Oh. Oh, how cute. Hello, Danielle. And hey, this, Phil. almost at the top of the list here, almost done. Uh, this is our number two choice. Oh. Viva Pinata Trouble in Paradise. A Excellent lot like choice. the uh, the other Viva Pinata game. Um, didn't it came out what like a year or two years later? Yeah, two thousand eight, um, I think, for this one. The big difference is basically just they added more stuff. Sure. They added more more varieties of pinatas, and they added some uh, locales. Oh yeah, so I remember this you stuff. You can like yeah. sort of teleport over to like a swamp thing and a desert thing and like a I ice see. tundra yeah. thing. Um, and that's all cool, but the the best thing that they added is, in addition to just the regular like you know gardening mode, they added a just for fun mode. Oh, that's which awesome! Which is what we're in now. Yeah, you we're just, just hanging kind of out. Hang out, play what you you know, do what you want to do. Um, let's let's add some snow. Should we make it a snow? Yeah, let's. Should we let's, make it a desert? Let's do some snow. That sounds nice. It's yeah, nice. It's a nice snowy area here. Oh. Look, look! Worm, get out of here. Worms. It's a snow. What are you doing? Another cute little worm. We don't wanna we don't want your kind around here. But we do because they're so cute. They are cute. This game um, is adorable. This probably won't be uh as long as the other Viva Pinata section. Um just because it is very much like a lot of the same stuff. 
Sure, um, yeah. In the same way that we put RC Pro-Am 2 ahead of the original, the reason is essentially like, this is that but more. Yeah. Um, so it's like, if you really dig that thing, um, you know, and if you have the Rare Collection, you kind of might as well just go to this one. Sure, sure. I mean, there's always uh, value in, in spending a little bit of time with the original to get a feel for things and then kind of going back. But, Maybe. you know, if your time's limited, you can just start with this. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to be missing out on much. Sure, sure. Um, this, little, this little snowy playground here. I just want to get rid of that, those worms. <laughs> I want to see what new, new creations we can get with snow here. Um, your garden, I think, is in general a little bit bigger as well. Yeah, so you have it, it a little bit more bigger. space to. Uh, I know it gets bigger in the in the original as well, but I feel like sure. it's bigger in general here. Yeah, you're starting from a, a wider. See, it seems like you're starting from a wider area here as well. So much space to cover in snow. Oh, oh. Whoop. What was that? Mean? I don't know what that it's means. It's becoming a citizen. Or resident? I think oh, resident. Oh, I just didn't know what the uh, thing above his head meant. But I, think it, I think it might have just been like, hey, it's an alert. He's happy. What a happy, joyful little game. I love it. It's so relaxing. Yeah. It's so chill. Um, there's so much, like, just, yeah. Joyful is a good way of putting it. Like, Absolutely. It's a weird, like, weird look for this right here. I don't know why it gets so blocky. It's probably actually grid-based, and the texture just kind of goes over it. That's Maybe. what I'm imagining. <laughs> that might be. Yeah. There seems to be some sort of balloon passing overhead. Oh. Oh! Oh! There's our Sparrow Mint buddy. Oh, cute little Sparrow Mint. Hey, little friend. Get them in here. Oh, the animation is so adorable. Oh my god. So cute. Yeah. Like we said with the original Viva Pinata, such a good game to play with a significant other. So, so perfect for that. And also just a good game to chill out to. It's a, it's a good, like, relaxing end of the night, like, totally. oh, I just want to play something for, like, an hour while I wind down. It's yeah. not going to leave me on edge before bed. Yeah. Um, this is the perfect game for that. Yeah, it totally um, is. All right, let's stop pouring this. Let's see what, uh... Some snow critters. What else that we can, uh... Put up in our garden here. <laughs> we can make like a desert Barn area cans. too. Let's make some plants maybe. Yeah. Yam, corn, pumpkins, radish. Garlic, chili, pea. Oh my god, you can do so much. Bluebells. Blue oh, that sounds really nice. I bet that will attract something cute. I think most of the things you do in this game attract something cute. <laughs> Snowdrops. Let's get those over here in our snow. Yeah, snowdrops. Nice little snowdrops. And get that away. Look at that. I think we're gonna want to water these, right? Probably. I like how you water the snowdrop. I see snowdrop. No? Maybe? I love the creaky little uh, sound effects, too. It's very I'm gonna cute. drown it. <laughs> oh, look! A snow critter! I Is think. that a snow critter? I'm no, not sure. No, it looks sure. like a desert critter, actually. It looks more like a desert, hey, yeah. Hey, buzzing. <laughs> oh, look. A little shake a little there. Shake, little breast feathers? <laughs> I don't know yeah. what that's called. Anyway. No, you're right, probably. Breast feather. Oh, that's nice. Taking care of the garden. Some poppy seeds there. Oh no! A plant dried out! Uh oh. How could how could it be? Maybe we put too many plants at once. Uh oh. Well, the buzz engine seems to like the snow area. Maybe he's sick Maybe of the snow. desert. Yeah. And he, you know, wants to go to the snow. You know, we could check our hot. encyclopedia and find out. Yeah, we totally could. If we wanted to be real smart about it. Yeah, we could do that. 
So, let's see if I can remember how to access the encyclopedia here. So did you play as much of this as you played of the original? No, I didn't. Mm. Um, and I'm actually excited to play, spend more time with this now, yeah. just because I would played so much of the original that um, yeah. by the time I hit this, I was a little like, uh, I'll maybe just chill on it a little bit. Oh, he comes when there's a spearman. Okay. That's when he appears. Oh, I, I remember there was somebody at 1UP back in the day who, who became really mercenary about selling their animals. I think it was Anthony Gallegos, sure. possibly. I remember back in those days, listening to the podcast on 1UP, he talked about it. This is real cool, real chill. Yeah. I got some buttercups in here, oh, too. Oh, that's nice. Wow. Yeah. Um, I like this. I like chill out mode. I like that they have a mode where it's just like, here's all of the things that you need to do anything. I really Aww. appreciate that. Yeah. I also just like playful, joyful, happy games, too. Not me. You hate them. <laughs> Here it is, our number one, Danielle. Oh, well-deserved number one. Banjo-Kazooie. Banjo-Kazooie, one of the best games on the Nintendo 64, hands down. And a, a you know great console, so great game on a great console. 1998. This was uh, sort of one of the first really good 3D platformers that came out after Mario 64. I feel like that sure. sort of took the cues from Mario 64 in terms of the camera control and sort of the structure of the game. You know, you're doing things for you know specific objectives and and you know collecting a certain thing that meant you did that objective. Um, but did it well. <laughs> many, there are many imitators in these years, but not many who did it well. Yeah, I think you are absolutely right. Um, and I think the reason that it ranks so highly for me is just, uh, as already discussed a little bit when we talked about Banjo-Tooie, but the focus in this game compared to some of Rare's other games mm. um, just really shines through to me. Absolutely. The level design in this game is incredible, I think. Uh, every single world here is memorable and interesting, and has interesting objectives, basically. Uh, it, here in the swamp, you know, there's a... There's sort of a cameo by Tip Tup the Turtle, who was in um, a couple of the Banjo games and also Diddy Kong Racing. And it's like a musical mini-game. There's also an area of the swamp where you can turn into a little alligator, Yes. And then you can go into the water, because apparently the, the water has biting fish, or it has yes. you know, something in it that you can't go into. Uh, so always interesting things uh, in terms of like how you traverse the level. There's always cool things to do in every in every world. I have to say... This. Oh, I, oh, go ahead and uh, you gotta do the... That's... Whoops. You can do that, or you can do the, the like ram move. The, yeah, I'm trying to... There, there we go. There you go. Nice. Um, also a game that has amazing sort of special moves and they unlock as you go yes uh, and I always found that really satisfying when I played this game yeah absolutely um, like getting a new move and immediately knowing the the thing that I like about the moves in this in particular um, is not only uh, like a lot of times it's like oh that special move is gonna help me access a new area that's cool mm. but it's not like they're just keys there right. are also moves that you're going to be able to use in combat whenever you want. Exactly. Um, there are moves that, like, as soon as you get them, you get that sense of, like, oh, this is, like, how I can accomplish this thing that I've been having trouble with. Totally. And it opens up, like I said this before uh, in an earlier video, but the way that it sort of opens up the possibility space is amazing. Uh, like, oh, yeah, I can do all these new things now. Not just I can reach new areas, which there's plenty of that, certainly. Absolutely. But also, I can just do new things in this world, and this world just opened up to me that much more. And it's really, really cool to see And that. the worlds are so, like, fun to explore. Oh my god, yes. Um, this was something we mentioned that in the Banjo-Tooie video, uh, really briefly, but like, there are levels in this game where I would have friends over and we'd be talking or something. We wouldn't even be playing the game, but we would just be sort of kicking around the world, looking at stuff, running around, jumping, as just sort of like a background thing to do. That's how interesting these worlds are to look at and sort of be in and listen to and sort yeah. of explore a little bit. And um, this game also had a really great... I think the, the seeds of where Banjo-Tooie has all that interaction among the different worlds that I think is the coolest thing about it, the seeds of that are sown in here because there are certain special objectives and special things you can only find by exploring outside of the world, in the overworld, as different creatures with different powers, yeah. too, which is pretty cool. Nice little touch there. 
Oh yeah, there's a treacherous Jiggy here. I already got that. Oh, you got the treacherous Jiggy, alright. But yeah, this, this game is also so colorful and bright and fun and has some of the best music, I think, on the N64. Here's what I'm looking for. Here, here's the mumbo. Let's get turned into an alligator. Absolutely. So this is all Mumbo did in this first game, was he turned you into things. <laughs> yes. Used his, uh, magic, which, you know, maybe not the most culturally sensitive character uh, here. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> there's that, but the actual gameplay stuff that's happening here. So this cute little alligator can chomp on things, he can eat things, and also he can go in all that swamp water that uh, Banjo can't like go in. like a satisfying chomp sound, too. So good. Giant mosquito? Not a problem. I'm gonna eat your face. If I can actually. <laughs> if you can get him. Real high up. <laughs> He's diving down now. Or you can just eat the honey. Nice honeycombs there. Uh, also, this alligator guy, he's so cute. Like, he's adorable. You have the little backpack? Yeah, this little backpack. You know, Kazooie's in there, I guess. I guess. Oh, maybe. Um, you can actually sneak uh, on Yeah, there's in a mini here. game in here, yeah. Um, which is pretty goofy. Yeah, you gotta eat more than this other crocodile guy. And I think you're an alligator, so it's like alligator versus crocodile. Yep, Mr. Vile, the crocodile. Yeah, of course, let's accept it. This is actually a really hard mini game. Not the first iteration, but I think there are like three. Yeah, different you have to do and like it gets three really different ones. tough. If you come back to this later, you see the shoes in the background there. Uh, that allows you to go faster, and that can be helpful. You get the shoes in Gobi's Desert, which is the sort of, you know, fun desert pyramid-themed level. Yeah, but you can you can get through this without those shoes. Yeah, yeah, you totally can. At least I can. You know, because you got the mad crocodile alligator eating skills here. Pro tip for beating this guy, you kind of follow him, but then you, you bite everything he was going to bite. Yeah, that definitely totally helps, you're right. <laughs> Even though that is not what I'm doing at all. Yeah, it's alright. The first version of this isn't too bad. Also, he's kind of slippery, the little alligator dude. He's, he's kind of like, I want to eat it so bad. Just reminds me of like a little kid who wants ice cream. Uh, this is also definitely a game that was, uh... Whether you sort of liked it or not, had a lot of personality. Like, everything has googly eyes and talks yeah. like, boop, 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 boop. I liked that. I thought it was cute. Not Let's everybody see, he does. He says I lose. Well. I don't if you lose, he tries to bite thing. your butt. Oh, yeah, and he did. What a jerk. He did bite your butt a little bit there. Alright, let's not keep doing this <laughs> mini game. Goodbye, Mr. Vile. keep exploring Vile. The, uh, the swamp over here. Go away, Mr. Vile. But yeah, Vile. you can see I can... I can while I'm in alligator form, I can uh, just straight up... Hang out in that poison water. Yeah, hang out in the water and not have to worry. And there... Oh, you got him! Nice! Check out that other... Mm-hmm. I have to say, I also really enjoy Banjo-Kazooie speedruns. It's something I watch often. Sure. There's one runner uh, called Stivity Bobo who has sort of the world record on any percent and also um, 100%, I think. What's their name? Stivity Bobo. Wow. Yeah, it's a good Banjo Kazooie running yeah, game, too. It's not bad. Uh, he's got some great runs. Uh, he's been at, you know, Games Done Quick a few times, sort mm -hmm. of running this game. Really cool to see sort of the strategies for, I bet this for is how a game, to cut I, through I, stuff. <laughs> this is my feeling about most N64 games, but I bet it's a game that there's a lot of broken stuff that you can really. There is. Like, there sure is. Not as much as Donkey Kong 64. That one is infamous for sort of its quick fixes and how they sure. made it. This one, there are definitely a few skips that are really ridiculous, but for the most part, uh, it's still a pretty long run to go through it. It's, it's you know, a two and a half hour run, I think, even even at any percent. Joe hanging out. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with how well focused this game was. Like, this is, there's really good tight level design in yeah. this game. Um, and there's not a ton of shortcuts where, like, the geometry is a little weird or anything like that. I think there's only maybe one or two sort of shortcuts like that. Which is pretty cool. The Donkey Kong 64 runs are amazing because it, that game was so broken and kind of hacked together in some ways. Oh, you almost have 100 notes! Boom. There's Bottles! He was dead in Banjo Tooie. Oh, <laughs> sort of. Or Bottles. Or most of it. Uh, the notes are actually used to unlock different. Uh, uh, 
doors in the overworld yeah. that then lead to new areas where you can potentially find more levels. And this is a discussion we have had, but and we, we've sort of uh, talked about this, but I don't know if we've talked about it in, in uh, specifically about Banjo-Kazooie, but I never minded that I had to collect a lot of things in Banjo-Kazooie because of the way the yeah. game is designed, so, it shows you the coolest parts of the game. It's actually sort of like, hey, go yeah. towards this cool area. You're, you never feel like you're just collecting things for the sake of it. You actually I mean, feel like it's leading you towards another cool area. A lot of the collectibles do stuff. So like yeah. you're seeing me pick up a lot of stuff here like, Eggs are specifically for shooting. Yeah. Feathers are They're specifically useful. like they are determining how long you can fly. Yeah. Um, the closest thing to like a superfluous collectible in this area is like the Jinjos that are like, oh, you just get all of those. Yeah, and there's you get five in every jiggy, level. Yeah. And the jiggies are just gating your progress. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, everything is actually like accomplishing something. Yeah. At some point. Or leading you towards something in the game and showing you something yes, cool. Yes, Which exactly. is helpful in a game that has a lot of really cool things and a really large amount of space to show it to you. There's oh. two croco buddies hanging oh, out. Oh, man. Having a, having a hang party. Having a uh, eye hang. <laughs> I love Banjo-Kazooie. It is definitely, in my opinion, the best game on this collection. Hell um, yes. And the collection in, in general. Whoa, is real, real... it's on both sides. Yeah. The collection in general is real good, so I think you guys should check it out. Um, I'm gonna vomit. This is making Absolutely. me nauseous. Absolutely, vomiting with joy at Banjo Kazooie. <laughs>